What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. Um, as you can tell, this might be a little bit of a low energy uh, video for me today. I'm I'm very sick, uh, but as they say, the show must go on. I don't really know who they are, but it's something. <laughs> Uh, as always, we are your co-hosts, Spencer, and the newly engaged Gabe. Oh, congrats. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's congrats, so exciting. Yep, super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, we are also joined by our friend Sam from the Shellfish with Sam blog, uh, which is not a blog about crabs. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll introduce her more in just a sec. But if you're wondering what we're doing here today, we are chatting about Chris Wooding's Dark Water Legacy. We'll talk a little bit about our thoughts on the Ember Blade, and then we'll primarily focus on his new release, The Shadow Casket. If you like this content, remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to see us talk about movies, shows, and video games, including HBO's The Last of Us show, check out the description below for a link to our second channel, Fantasy Files Reacts, where we do just that. Uh, with that out of the way, let's introduce our guest and talk a little bit about what we've been reading lately, or really what we've been reading before <laughs> the <Yeah>. Water <laughs> Legacy. Uh, yeah, and then we'll talk about uh, these two books. Uh, so Sam, you joined us for our Night Angel videos for the second and third book to that. And you run a blog called the Shellfish with Sam blog. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't really paid attention to it lately. Have you been adding to that lately or is no. it a hiatus? I, I guess like I just, it stopped being fun for a little while. So yeah. I, I took a step back. I was feeling just a lot of pressure to like read certain things, even if I didn't necessarily want to read it. Mm. And I realized it was like taking the fun out of reading a little bit for me. So I've just taken like a little step back for a little while. Um, That's more than fair. To, yeah, yep, it's, just, important. You know, it's important. It's <laughs> important. Catch my breath. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I totally understand a, a hiatus. There's uh, Gabe and I are actually just starting to get back into doing like actual book discussion. Yeah, content. We, we went so long with just like creators corners for having <laughs> yeah. like interviewing authors or yeah. audiobook narrators, which was great. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. We're getting I, back on the saddle with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel like that was a really good break from doing book content because there, there was a period of time. I don't think I really talked about it, but there, there was definitely a period of time where I was getting a little stressed out from, okay, I got to read this book by mm -hmm, Friday yeah. and then I got to make like all these notes and we yep. got to make sure that we, we, you know, they, they always turned into like really long podcasts. And so yeah. it was kind of nice to take a step back and, and be like, Hey, let's just do some interviews with mm -hmm. some of our friends who are also content creators and authors and narrators and stuff. Um, but it is nice to get back into this. We just got, we just started this again with the, uh, the most recent King's Dark Tidings book. Yep. And afterwards, I think Gabe and I were like, oh, that was nice to talk about yeah. the book again. That was cool. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, if, yeah, definitely. I think if you need a hiatus, that's, uh, you know, some of the, the best, that's one of the best things you can do for your yeah own like creative ability mm -hmm. um but yeah thank you for joining us again I'm thanks super for having me again yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited yeah you and I were talking on Twitter is probably like a month ago or so and I think I had just done I had just done some sort of video where I was kind of looking back on some of the guests that we've had on the channel I'm mm -hmm. like oh we gotta get Sam back yeah and uh and so yeah that was that was a great call yeah I was really laughing at your favorite you know interview or episodes yes. video because you called me the the first fantasy files yeah follower. You're one of the first. yeah <laughs> awesome. and I was like that's what I want to be called from now on <laughs> I'm the first fantasy files follower okay yeah, yeah you were you were definitely there in the early <laughs> days for sure without a doubt yeah, I guess if people want to follow you on Twitter or whatever, where where could they do that? 
Uh, it's Sam Reed's 56. You can find me there. It's a little bit easier to say than shellfish. Yeah. <laughs> I, I made it a really long time ago. And then, you know, I gained traction <laughs> with it. So I felt like I couldn't change it. Yeah, and yeah. it's better in written form than it is right. when you say it yeah, out loud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I'm just too far in now. And yeah, I just kind of have to deal with it. So right. it is what it is at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's That's got to be hard to... Uh to rebrand i i yes. forget there there was one other podcast name it was like between two names it was either the fantasy files podcast or it was something with like friends in the title i forget what it was it was like friends and fantasy or something mm-hmm. and i went back and forth on him for a long time then finally i went to gabe and i was like okay I, I have these two titles what do i what do we do and he's like i like fantasy files i'm yep. like i do too I, I, i'm so glad i'm so <laughs> glad we went with fantasy files yeah because it it it's rolls off name. the tongue and it's it's just easy to say and yeah yeah it's a good name so we have been uh balls deep in the dark water legacy for like yes. two or three weeks now <laughs> So I guess Gabe's been reading some stuff this week. Do you want to talk about what you've been reading? Yeah, so I'm I'm just getting prepped for you reading Cradle. Oh boy. Yep. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to let up on it at all. Uh, no, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, so so I'll start with before. So the only book I read before probably that wasn't just some rereads was The House at the House at the End of the World. It's a oh, newer newer Dean, right. Dean Koontz the, book. Yeah. Yep. And so I, I read that and, and I actually really liked it. I, I think Spencer didn't all that much. Yeah. Uh, or you DNF'd it, right? A temporary okay. DNF. Yeah. Like I, I do, I do want to go back to it, but I, I was a few hours in, I was probably like a good three and a half hours yeah. in or so. Yep. Um, and it was, it was even after everything kind of started popping off, like after we see some of these things that are inhabiting the island um i was just like i'm just not like i i don't know why but i'm not enjoying yeah no that's fine that's totally Um, fair i think it was definitely one of those books where it was like the first three quarters were like slow and then the ending was like good you know like that Mm -hmm. was like kind of cool but other than that i was just doing before that i was doing rereads and then yeah ever since i i finished this uh shadow casket like seven days ago yeah six <laughs> days ago and i've been reading cradle since and so i'm oh, okay. on book i think eight of cradle now oh, okay cool oh wow nice they're really short they're only like well at two times speed they're like four hours right yeah okay yeah i'm i'm looking at my library and there's really not there's not a lot that i had read in between the king's dark tidings and starting the ember blade the only thing that i read somewhat recently is the second book in the first law trilogy and uh, i enjoyed that quite a lot and so i'm excited to do the third one at some point but yeah i think man that's that's really that's really pretty much it i got a arc and an audio arc of peter hartog's new book pieces of eight yeah i saw Uh, that in your library yeah so i'm super excited to check that out is that is that in the same series as the one he did before or is it different Uh, bloodlines oh okay cool i read bloodlines Bloodlines and i I really liked it like the first time i read just an hour or two and i was like nah not for me then i went back and read it and i was like this is pretty cool actually oh you did go back yeah yeah i reread the whole thing yeah and i really enjoyed it sweet yeah. Okay, cool. That's that's good to know. Yeah, because it's kind of like uh, a sci-fi Dresden file. Yeah, I felt like. Yep. Yeah. Um, what about you, Sam? What were you reading before Chris Wooding's books? Uh, let's see. I read um, Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson. Mm. Um, it was re- it's really good. I have the second one. It just came out like a week or two ago. I'm meaning to start that after I've been done with all this. Um, I read uh, Babel uh oh yeah like a historical kind of fantasy dark academia yeah and then i read um hellbent it was a follow-up to lee bardugo's ninth house series which is like a secret society at yale um it was was really interesting they're really good um and yeah i didn't finish babel i i couldn't it just got to be too much and there were no characters that i fell in love with that's kind of what I heard. Yeah, um, but I really loved Ilborn. I'm really excited to start the second of that. And Hellbent as a follow-up was really, really good as well. 
Okay. Did you read uh, R.F. Kuang's Poppy War? No, I didn't. But it is on a list somewhere in like an Amazon cart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I I had tried Poppy War, and I don't know what it was about it. I don't know if it was maybe too slow or I I'm really not. I'm not that into like Asian inspired fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a couple that I I really like, like the Greenbone Saga is definitely definitely a favorite. But yeah, it's really really hard for me to get into like Asian inspired stuff, and I don't know mm -hmm. why. So Poppy War was hard. Uh, I was thinking about trying uh, Babel, but yeah, I've heard really mixed reception even from people that really liked the poppy wars so. well and the weird thing about babel was that so um i had a friend listening and she listened to it and she said it was easier to get through that way where i read from the physical book and one major problem i had is that there's tons of like clips notes in it mm. um like they uh cite a ton of stuff in it oh. and the first symbol that they use is an asterisk but it is so tiny that when I'm reading, I would pass by it. And then I get uh, to the bottom and realized I hadn't found it. So then I would have to go back and you had to like search for it. Dang. Oh, and weird. that really, really took me out of the story. And I would find that I was trying really hard to look for it as I was reading. And that like distracted me from it. And that was yeah. a huge issue for me during the book. And it, yeah. it was too detailed. Yeah. I don't need... I don't need to know how the bread's made right, yeah. <laughs> like step right. by step. I don't need the recipe. Um, and she just got a little too scientific in it. So yeah. So that were, the, me. were, were the asterisks like, was it her own notes like as an author or is it no. notes within the world? Notes within the world. Like, <laughs> a, like if they mentioned something and it was something we don't have in our world, that, uh, kind of like that but it, it wasn't really necessary and like i said the second one was like a huge cross you could always see that one but the tiny asterisk it, you always okay. skipped by it interesting yeah it really bothered me <laughs> i i wonder i wonder how that would be handled in the audiobook like how they would um, do the asterisks in the audio book. I asked my friend that and she said that they narrate it and they like do it in a different voice and they oh. let you know that they're reading the citation as they do oh. it. Interesting. Yeah. That might be kind of cool. Okay. That's interesting. So yeah, then you mentioned Illborn and this is a book that you recommended to me a little while ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What'd you think of this? Like in a, just in a general way, what is it about? I've, um, I've seen a, a lot of buzz about it. So in like a general sense, it's almost kind of like the Crodens where they've taken this group has taken over and um, people can be born with certain powers and they've essentially like stamped all of that out. And so it follows four people as they're coming into their powers and trying to hide it and not be oh. caught. And obviously all the four stories slowly intertwine, well, uh, connect okay. to each other. Uh, and I really liked it. It, it, okay. was, it was really good it's really interesting um short chapters so it's not like they're not really long and it's not that big of a book to begin with so okay cool mm -hmm. i'll have to check that out all right well i think uh i think that's pretty much it i do have one question real quick are you watching the last of us oh of course of course you are okay good. <laughs> yes okay. Awesome. yes i'm we're really enjoying it how about you yeah. guys yes oh yeah it's amazing I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the games. Uh, I just replayed through the first game. Mm -hmm. And at first when I started watching the series, I was like, oh, well, that didn't really happen in that place. And that's not exactly like, and then I started replaying the game. I'm like, oh no, this is exactly <laughs> how it, like, it is like one for one almost besides yeah. like, Episode three was like the biggest deviation, but everything else is damn near the same. Yeah. Like the, the only thing that was a little bit different was how like Henry and Sam come in in like episode four or five or whatever that was. And really everything else is almost shot for shot. It is really, really cool to see an adaptation done so incredibly well. 
yeah it's been great to watch so far yeah. there's a new episode coming out tonight as we record tonight. this i'm so excited that's, yep. <laughs> that's why i was telling you i was like i was like we gotta uh... <laughs> we gotta do this at noon because gabe and i are watching uh, watching yeah. the last of us uh, yeah i'm on the so... east coast so oh yeah so it's probably like uh it comes out at like nine, nine yeah, yeah dang <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's like lucky. 3 30 for me right now or something <laughs> <laughs> it's almost four <laughs> nice all right well uh cool so let's get into our books here we're going to be talking about the ember blade and the shadow casket um and kind of what we're going to do here is since you know the shadow casket just came out and i'm sure that it's the book that we want to talk about more so we'll start out with doing kind of like just a general discussion about both books, just things that wouldn't really fit into either specific book discussion. And then we'll kind of briefly talk about uh, either our favorite or least favorite things about the Ember Blade. And then we'll do like our, our big uh, shadow casket discussion. Um, so if you haven't read either of these books, this is your spoiler warning. Uh, you really don't want to get spoiled on these books. They're very good. Uh, so this is your spoiler warning in three, two, one. You've been warned. All right, guys. You both have had pretty positive reception to these books. I wasn't sure exactly how it was all going to shake out. I think Gabe was kind of the biggest wild card for me. I was like, I was like, I don't like, it might be something that Gabe loves. It might be something that he, he doesn't like so much. Yep. Um, and I was really surprised to get positive feedback from, from both of you guys. So do you want to talk about kind of your just general thoughts, kind of starting with the Ember Blade and going into Shadow Casket? Sure. Yeah. So I think the thing that kind of hooked me the most in the Ember Blade was it, it r reminded me very much of like an Ocean's Eleven, like a heist. Yeah, like this big heist story that the whole book is building up to this ultimate mm -hmm. heist. Um, yeah. and, and that was really cool. I really enjoyed, you know, them prepping for it and planning it out and getting the barrels so they can light the yeah. castle on fire and all that stuff was pretty cool. So yeah, so that was just kind of good, simple fun. And then the second book, The Shadow Casket is where we see, we see a lot more of the world, you know, everything opens up and mm -hmm. we see this much bigger plot that, yeah. um, that kind of is going on between the rebels and uh, the Crodens. Um, and so just kind of watching that play out and the, all the characters were just amazing. The character quality and character like advancement mm -hmm. in these books is really good. Yeah. Lots of build up to some crazy stuff happens. Um, lots of twists and turns and kind of crazy situations that come into play and, and yeah. happen out. So yeah, I, I, I was really impressed by, by both the books. I love the first one. I think just for that simplicity of it's just a heist, like every, yeah. it's a mission. Everybody's on mm -hmm. it. We're yeah. sneaking around doing that stuff is cool. But then the second book is like much more way deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree about the characters. I think that the first book, there wasn't really like archetypes exactly, but like the characters, it just didn't go into like their backstory that much. And then as you go into the second book, you see this nuance, not only with the characters, but also the world. And you're like, oh, this conflict is not as simple as good versus bad. Yeah. Like there, there are Crodens who are good people yep. and, and you kind of learn about like their, their doctrine. And even though they're, they're doing bad things, you can see where the good in it, like they're all about, uh, Cade was talking about it. He's like, they're really all about brotherhood and being like united. And they just want everybody to be that way. Now, should you force your beliefs on an entire other country yeah. and like mm -hmm. force them to believe how you do? No, but you can see that they're trying to like advance the world as a whole. And like, that's kind of their underlying goal. And, and so I think that it added a lot more nuance to the situation. And then also you see, a ton of nuance with the characters like nobody there there I, I don't think that there is one specific person in this book that is good or bad they all have their own yep. motivations their own uh machinations and their own like uh i guess just desires and how they're going to go about kind of you know making this whole quest work out and it was really really interesting especially near the end 
when everybody's kind of backstabbing each other and then coming back around and there's, you know, hate and forgiveness and all these things that are kind of coming into play at one time. It's like, wow, this is, this is a lot more complicated than you would have initially thought. And yet Chris Wooding does such a good job of making it not complicated. Like I was able to follow like Mm -hmm. everybody's uh, own like desires and stuff all throughout. And I never well there wasn't too many times where I was like what is this person doing it was always like it it was always kind of like when you when it was time to know you knew Mm -hmm. and and he was really good about laying that out I think yeah what'd you think Sam I felt the same way I I really loved book one I I think I flew through um the ember blade a lot faster actually than I did the shadow casket Yeah. yeah um I liked how the chapters were pretty short. So that makes me read more because I'm always like, oh, one more chapter, you know, before yeah. bed. And Just then one next more. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is like the perfect example of this book of like, oh, just one more, one more. And next thing you know, you're 30 more right. in. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought the beginning, I understood the need for the beginning and, and the backstories and how they had to show us how they were living and, the difference between how Cade was living and how Aaron was living and all of that. And I was worried they were going to then be stuck in um, the prison, the prison for a lot longer than they were. So I was really glad that that didn't last as much of the book as it did. And um, I, like you said, I agree that the author, sometimes things go over my head when I'm reading them. And I think everything he was doing, I was able to catch on pretty quickly, which I really appreciated. And he, he does, even though it's a huge book, he doesn't waste any of his words. Everything has a point. There's a reason for everything that he puts in there. And so I, I thoroughly enjoyed that part of his writing. Yeah. I, I think that I, I felt the same as you about the beginning. I, I liked it. I I always get a little nervous with any books that have like somebody getting a prison sentence because Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, like there's this one book called I think it's called On the Razor's Edge. I think it's by uh, Rob J. Hayes. And when I started it, I didn't realize that the character was like in prison for almost the entire book. And I was like, oh, man. And eventually it's like, there's there's only so much you can do in one location. Yeah. And that's kind of why I fell off of uh, TV shows like Orange is the New Black. Mm-hmm. And um, what was the other one? Prison Break. Yeah. Uh, I, I really fell off of those shows after a while because they were good. But I was like, I just can't. I, I feel claustrophobic mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. one Confined, location. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I feel the same way with books a lot. And I felt like there was enough interesting things kind of happening in that prison with like Mm -hmm. the pirate guy and how he's like running the whole thing. And when they finally decide to break out, they're like, they're like, you know, figuring out all these ways to do it. But Kate is like addicted to ragweed and Mm -hmm. there's all these really, really cool things at play. Um, But yeah, I, I did like the beginning where you're kind of learning about you know, Cade and Aaron and how they live two very different lives, Mm -hmm. but they're, but they're best friends. And I thought it was interesting how Cade looks like a Crodon. He's got the Mm -hmm. blonde hair and blue eyes and kind of like a more of a squarish face. Aaron looks very Aussie and he's got like the curly brown hair and, you know, he just, he looks more like the, the native people. And they kind of switch like eventually, Mm -hmm. you know, cause Kate is the one who is telling Aaron, like you're a Crowden lover Mm -hmm. and and all this stuff. And then they, they kind of switch and Kate becomes the one that's like, Oh, maybe I, maybe I do fit in better with the Crowdens. And he looks like one. Mm -hmm. And so he's able to get really far in that kind of company. And then you have Aaron who kind of flip flops and he's like, Oh no, we need to, we need to get the Crodens out of here. And so I, I thought that was a just kind of a, a really interesting relationship between the two because they're best friends and they love each other, but there's so many times where they also hate each other. Yeah. And I, I thought that that was, that was really cool. And I, I kind of wish, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but I kind of wish that the author would have made Cade 
more or less permanently on the side of the Crodens. I think it would have been really cool if he didn't come back around in the end. And he was just like, I'm like, I'm on the Croden side now. And it was kind of yeah. Aaron, Aaron versus Cade. And, and just that feeling of like these two people that are best friends kind of at each other's throats for the rest of the series. I, yeah, I, think I wouldn't like that. I don't think. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Uh, I like waffle between it because when, you know, it's first revealed, like everything that's going on with him, I was like, oh, this is a great twist, you know, and then Aaron leaves him at the end and he wishes he hadn't left him. And that's how I kind of knew that, like, okay, they're going to, like, work their way back back together. Yeah, I could have gone either way, but I think I'm happy that the author went the way that he did. Yeah, I I like the way that that Cade came back in with the the deception and like yeah. the kind of like just trust me look. Yeah. But, you know, without without giving too much away, I think that that's one thing that I really liked about uh Red Rising was that you have these two guys that are best friends uh-huh. book one, <laughs> and then throughout they're like mortal enemies. Mm-hmm. Um and so I I thought that that was uh I, I definitely thought that was the way he was going, but I, w- I was definitely pleased to see uh, Cade come back around. Yeah, I think when we found out he failed the test of like taking the envelope back, that's when I knew that it wasn't it wasn't going to be permanent that they were enemies. Yeah. So not so much about the story, but what is up with the hardcover version of the Shadow Casket? This is such a weird <laughs> I messaged you situation. immediately yeah. when I went to go buy it because it was my birthday in January and my husband had gotten me a Barnes & Noble gift card. Oh. Um, or no, sorry, he got that for me for Valentine's Day. And I was like, oh, perfect. I'll use it to buy the Shadow Casket. And so when I went to look and then it was like, oh, pre-order it. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. So I messaged you, Spencer, and was like, do you have the book? Because, like, there's no book available. It only has ebook available, not, like, a physical copy, which I thought was really weird. But then I found out it's it was available in, like, the UK. So I ordered it from, like, Book Depository and was able to get it in time, which was really great. But that was so weird. Yeah, that that was odd. I was talking to somebody else who was trying to get it on Amazon, and it was saying May. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, why would you release your audiobook and ebook, but not like release the hardcover everywhere? And so I don't know if certain certain booksellers have like a priority on it or like have some sort of deal where they're the first ones. Because Broken Binding had a really, really beautiful special edition of, of both of these. And so I don't know if certain distributors have like, you know, first... I don't know what it's called exactly, but first sale rights or something mm-hmm. um, that he's teamed up with or what, but yeah. I've had this happen before with, really? I think it was Priory of the Orange Tree. I really wanted to read it. And sometimes they drop books in the UK first, but it's weird to have been able to like still get the audio and ebook because like yeah. you said, it's like at that point, why not just give me the option to purchase it? Right. Yeah, that's super weird. It, yeah, it's weird to not have the hardcover everywhere um, yeah. day one. I, I purchased both of each, the audio for both and the physical for oh, both. Oh, wow. Of them. Nice. Yeah. That's so commitment you're, right there. Yeah, you're in deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got them all. <laughs> I, I do I do really want to get the hardcovers because they are beautiful. It's really nice. You have them? Yeah, it's oh, really my nice. God. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That Those is awesome. are so pretty. Because yeah. <laughs> oh I have to squeeze, gosh. you know, my reading in when I can. So like, I'll get the audio. So I have like a 25 minute commute to work. So like oh, I okay. listen on the way to work, on the way home. But when I'm home, I have a five-year-old. It's pretty right. much impossible to yeah, for sure. listen to something because he interrupts me so much. So at least with the book, then I can like, you know, throw yeah. the bookmark in for a second. So right. that's why I go back and forth between the two. But I again, I end up purchasing one book to multiple right. times <laughs> yeah. hey you're just supporting the author exactly you know? yeah. exactly do you, do you have a kindle i so i have one somewhere but i like so infrequently charge it but i'll read on my phone a lot too so i have the kindle i have the iphone um i actually have probably hundreds of ebooks on my phone oh. i would say at least like three or four hundred um i get a lot from publishers they send yeah. out a lot oh. more ebooks than they do you know yeah. physical books so i have 
that plus when I was a bartender for about six years, I was a cigarette smoker at the time. So during my breaks, I would read on my phone all the nice. time. Oh, nice. So wow. there was a time where I was almost exclusively on an e-reader or on my phone. So I have a lot in addition to everything yeah. you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'll, maybe I'll edit this out or whatever, but I just a question as like a content creator when publishers are sending you that many books, do you feel obligated to review them? So what I'll do is if I know that I'm not going to get to immediately, I always share the books that I'm sent. So I'll post about it in some way, even okay. if I haven't necessarily read it. So in those instances, I'll post about it and I'll put the synopsis with it. Okay. and do some sort of like it's fantasy it's historical fiction if you like right. this book you should read this book so I do promote it in some way even if I never get around to it okay cool but I'm honest about it I don't say I've read it when I haven't yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah there there's been there's been a couple arcs that I've gotten over the past year where people like reached out and asked if I wanted to review them and I was like sure okay and then I started them and I was like this isn't gonna get a good review yeah you don't want to give me. them a bad review yeah. Yeah. yeah and so yeah I've kind of been waffling on like do I reach out to the author and say hey this didn't work from for me and I don't want to give you a bad review or I don't know trying to figure out the balance there yeah it's hard that's why I'll I'll do a post where I'm like well if you liked this book you know, then you yeah. would like this book. So trying to put a good spin on it. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. So I, I guess my only other like kind of general initial thought was that I feel like the second book improved on the first book in every single way. Like, I, I think that like, although I loved the first book, I feel like almost every single aspect, like every single character, every single like world building element, uh, everything was like deepened. Do you, do you guys feel that way or yeah. no? Yeah, no, no, I totally do. You, you didn't say like the, the first book's not bad. And I, and I think it does a good job of its own story. Cause like I said, I feel like just the entire mission is the end game, the heist where everything yeah, happens. Blade, yeah. Yeah. And then cons considering that when you, when you open something up much more and you get a lot more going in, of course it's going to be better, you know, like yeah. there's just so much more going on there. Um, so yeah, I totally agree that the second book absolutely improved upon characters, story, their places that they got to go to uh, different factions, different people seeing more of the integral stuff of these societies. If, yeah. Right. I don't know. Okay. I think I'm going to have to disagree a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Only That's because, good. Let's hear it. Yeah. I think why I may have, been a little more partial to the ember blade as opposed to the shadow casket was because i felt the story moved a lot faster in the first mm. book i liked the premise of the the heist as well yep. um it, it could have been on its own a great standalone as well yeah. you, you yeah. know it, if he had stopped right there i wouldn't have been mad or angry like of course i would have loved more but i would have been fine with it because i did feel like it was semi a complete story with their group but yeah it did leave it open with, you know, the Crotons and now what are we going to do with the blade? And um, I think I just liked the pace a little bit better in the first one. I think the second one, like you said, delved into the characters a lot more, their changes, their growth, all of that, which I loved, but I just liked the action. There, yeah. there was more action in the first book. Yep. And I think that was much more of a page turner for me than the shadow casket was. That's totally fair. Yeah, yeah, totally fair. I would agree. They're definitely much more fast paced in the first one, which is mm -hmm. just grabbing. You know, it's very yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very grabbing. Yeah, every time you think you've got a handle on where <laughs> no, the story's no. going, you just something else happens. There's yeah. a plot within a plot within a plot, and so I just like the the story itself a little bit better. But I do see why the second book had to to go the way that it did. Yeah. So I yeah. just I think I prefer the heist a little bit more. Yeah, awesome for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. The The first book was significantly more fast paced. I think that for me, the shadow casket, I I just don't think that I was expecting that much from this book. Mm. Like, I, I don't like with the Ember Blade, like it, it certainly subverted a lot of tropes and it did everything that it did really well. But it was very much like a classic quest mm -hmm. fantasy. Yeah. Yep. And so I don't think that I was expecting the shadow casket to 
like open up the way that it did and like i like my thought all throughout the second book was this is a lot deeper and there's other like motivations and machinations that are going on behind the scenes that i would never have guessed Mm -hmm. and and so i think that was really cool for me like like the dread knights i did not expect them to be anything like i i just assumed that they were a fantasy creature and they oh were... you didn't i i guessed it i guessed oh, really? it before I'm the big you, reveal Sam. yep i really? i guess yeah i can't remember the exact oh i think they were saying i guess at some point when it, the way that he wrote ended one chapter and what it was about and started the next and brought up well where are all the sards going and then when oh, they get to the facility yeah. and they're feeling the bad energy immediately, I was like, oh, that's it. The Sards oh, are. Yeah. But but that's in the second book, right? Oh, yeah. I did not catch it in the first book. Absolutely okay. not. No, no. Yeah. But I did catch it before it was revealed. And yes. I don't, yeah. I, I, I'm not usually that great at, at catching. Me neither. Stuff. That's yeah. why I was so happy. When I, was <laughs> like, yes. I knew yeah. it. I knew yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. I was like, all right, that one for once. I actually figured yeah. something out ahead yeah. of time. <laughs> Yeah, when when they get into that facility, I was like, oh, I bet they're they're doing something with the Sards. But in the first book, I was like, I I guess I just kind of assumed that they were just some sort of fantasy creature and that there wasn't much to that. Well, they came Um, out of nowhere. There wasn't any real magic to speak of. Right. And so for them to come out and you could tell that they're they're not a natural being. I was like, right. oh, like, where is this going? Where did they Dark come from? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. How do these like Crotons who are supposed to be like the epitome of society and here they are with these dark creatures? Yeah. How did how did you come about getting them? And even Clisson didn't know yeah. Clisson, how they were made. Yeah. Yeah, he he remarks on that too. He's like, I, I don't know where they come from. He's like, but I always I feel never really... uneasy around them. Yes. Him. Yeah. So I thought that was really I lo- I loved that and how I thought they were all gonna kind of have the same power and how they all had completely separate yeah, abilities. That was, yeah. Yep. that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, let's uh let's go into kind of talking about the Ember Blade specifically. Um, we we kind of talked about like the prison scene already and uh Cade getting hooked on ragweed. And I, I thought this was just like a, a really cool series of events where you, you start to see the the rift between Cade and Aaron. Like it's almost like a mini version of what happens later like Aaron gets him into some sort of trouble Cade is mad at him and he he gets himself into like deep trouble with like this ragweed and now he's like addicted to the substance and Aaron kind of comes through again and and saves him and brings him back and uh yeah I I just love that whole kind of back and forth in the prison scene and with Cade he's like it's after I think it's after the collapse of the mine or whatever and kate is like on a stretcher oh and, yeah and he's like speaking gibberish yeah yep. he's like saying all this crazy stuff and aaron's like no he's gone forever and kate's like ah just kidding yeah and i, I just love i didn't see that coming yeah i didn't either <laughs> I didn't the first either. time <laughs> but yeah that was I mean, a great scene. i thought with their in- their relationship was really interesting from the beginning because they're both ossian And I was a little confused in the beginning because, you know, Aaron's family is rich and has money and Cade's is like a parent, dad is a carpenter and his mom stays home. And, but they lived these two completely separate lives, even though they're technically both Ossian, like Aaron wasn't Croton, but they were still best friends, even though the way they were allowed to live their lives were so completely different from each other. Yeah. So I kind of knew that there was going to be some sort of power struggle dynamic that came up with them eventually because yeah. Aaron had always taken for granted that he was the leader of the two of them and that right. he would just kind of go along with whatever he wanted to do. So I knew that that was going to blow up at some point and it was going to become a plot line in the story. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, and it is interesting too, how like, you know, I I feel like it would have been really easy for Wooding to make these two societies where the Crotons invaded this land and all Ossians are just under their thumb. But there's Mm -hmm. kind of this, uh, there's kind of this gray area, which is like Aaron's family where 
they're a noble Ossian. And so they're able to be involved in like the military and, and all this stuff. And there's kind of levels to it. They can carry swords and someone like right. Kane can. Yeah. It, it's it's really interesting because, you know, the you can see how the Crotons are trying to like integrate their selves and not not necessarily i mean they are like tyrannical but they're not trying to appear tyrannical Mm -hmm. they're like oh yeah we're including the ossians in our you know government and and all this stuff um so that that was really really interesting we get introduced to grub who oh, is, yes. he's my favorite uh, he's my he's favorite my character favorite. Yeah, yes the entire both books entire he's my series. absolute favorite character favorite oh, one hands down, down. <laughs> <Jinx>. <laughs> yeah he uh he wasn't necessarily my favorite but he was definitely he definitely grew on me over time uh he had some of the funniest moments yes um, i how I he love... talks about his big shits all the time <laughs> yes oh he, my he god mentions it multiple times yeah. yeah there's there's a point i don't think i put it in the notes here but there's a point later on where they are um they're back at that town where keel is like meeting with his family and stuff and grub and uh orca and all mm-hmm. them are around a fire and he's like yeah, I'm going to go take a big dump. He's like, bard mm-hmm. lady, you should probably come with me because they'll sing about this one. For <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. It's like, she's like, oh, what? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, those he's the best like comedic relief. Yeah. He's, he's got this quote early on or like this, this entire quote from the book where it says uh, or Grub says, Grub was born lucky, he said, which Cade thought unlikely considering his face. <laughs> yeah. and also that they're in a prison together you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah because i love the grub... oh go ahead go ahead but i was gonna say grub is the one who's like written about for the like description of the book where it's like he, they have to break out of prison but it, with the person that like he hates most so he was meant to be a big part of the the book intentionally yeah right yeah and I, I love the 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 third person that comes from Grub is like probably yes. my my favorite. Oh yeah, like the way he that he talks to himself. Yes, yeah. Grub did and this. The third or, person, you know, Grub yeah, would do all that. the time. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And now he has a nickname for everyone. Yes, yes. Although that did confuse me. Not to jump it ahead, did. but yeah, in the the shadow casket when Eddie and dies, they're telling you through Grub's point of view and he calls him like stink face or whatever and i couldn't remember who it was at the time and i'm like yeah who is it who got stabbed in the stomach i, can't <laughs> yes, figure I it had out. the same i had i had the exact same he called him uh he Dumb calls, face? no he, he calls him meat brain or something oh okay and i was Dumb like wait Cade, i think right oh okay yeah. Dumb that, face is that, Cade, Cade, yeah. yeah. mud slug mud is slug aaron. aaron yeah <laughs> um, but yeah i was so like awesome. yeah I was like, who is Meat Brain? What the Yeah. Heck? I was like, who I need to know who's dying. Like right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he he actually turned out to be like quite an interesting character. Yeah. And by the end of everything, like as we get into like the second book, he kind of becomes one of the few like good people. Like mm-hmm. every everybody else was like really morally gray. Like even even like our main characters, like they were pretty pretty morally gray making some yeah. decisions that you know weren't always good but grub kind of goes the opposite way where he he starts out as like a really selfish character and then later on him and aaron have this talk about friendship and aaron tells grub like grub asks like why did you come back for me and aaron says well because you're my friend and it's this big like revelation for him and he's like oh friend and he starts to like understand like what friendship is Mm -hmm. and then he kind of becomes like this good character that's like gonna be like a loyal friend that will always stick by his guys and so i I thought that was kind of cool that whole character arc yeah yeah the the moment where in in the first book you know they get they get the ember blade and they're beneath the ruins of the the yes udin or what's that what's that people's the old people oh the um er Erds, there's the Erds and there's the Sards. Okay, Erds. So it was the oh, Erds. Yeah. So they're beneath the thing and there's a bunch of traps set. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Vika has seen him kind of lusting over the Ember Blade. And they're about to get smushed. And, and Grub's like, pass Grub the, 
the Amber Blade. And Vigo's like, no, no, I no. see in his eyes. He wants to take this blade for himself. Yeah. And Grub's like, you know, you're going to have to trust me. And Aaron's like, take it. And he fucking saves him. I was like, that's yeah. when I knew. I was like, Grub's going to be a solid yeah. dude by yeah. the end of this. Yeah. Like, that was that's a big moment for him because before that, he was all the time in his head. He's like, Grub, Grub will bring back the Amber Blade to his homeland. Uh -huh. The best yeah. hero of all time. And the tattoos everywhere. And I was yep. like, yeah. Awesome. I loved when they like secretly hid the Ember Blade with Grub because they were like, yeah. nobody would actually believe we would let him hold it. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, that's yeah. great. I was yep. like, that is that such a cool. good twist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was smart. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like in that, in that scene at the end of the Ember Blade though, like, I feel like there was kind of a moment where when they passed him the blade where he was like, mm, should I take it? Oh, I definitely dude. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. It was the battle in his mind. That's, that was mm -hmm. the big part for me. Yeah. Cause he was like, just going back and forth. He's like, I could run right now and be the king of my homeland. Uh, but he decides to save him. I was like, dude, he, yes. yeah, he needed that moment. Of yes. The yeah. chance where he could have run away with it. And yep. so he needed that to be able to, to finally pick a side to get yeah, off the and he fence. Needed, he needed right. Aaron to trust him with that too. Yeah. I feel like that was a, that was a big part of it. Is but Aaron it did actually, it. Yeah. And I love how Aaron always kind of had a soft spot for him yeah. after that. Whereas and, Kate yeah. was like such an asshole about yeah. it. Like, I got <laughs> yeah. me so mad. I was like, dude, give him a break. You're not yeah. perfect. Like, right. stop. Dude, and when yeah. they were in the prison too, like there's moments like when they were escaping where Grub would like just like brutally stab this this officer. Yeah. And Aaron's yeah. like, wow, I am realizing that this guy's way more dangerous than I gave him credit for. Yeah. A couple of times and... like where Aaron was like freaked out. He's like, holy crap, this dude is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like when Grub carries, who did he carry? Was it Cade for like a really long time i thought that was like great character yeah. development for him that he was like willing to do that and he's always rowing the boats and then he'll complain yeah. about it and they're like yeah but you they're said like, grub is the best rower they're, they're like you asked to do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, i just love him so yeah. much yeah he's great what what did you guys think about this initial kind of love triangle between cade and aaron Ugh. and ben my oh, least favorite was... thing in the whole entire world oh it was awful okay interesting i thought it yeah, was just it, it's an overused trope i is. don't care yeah. for it and then for Cade to be like well i called dibs on her first and Aaron's yeah, like, that All was right. like come on dude. yeah uh, i i didn't care for it i didn't think yeah. it was needed and then they like double triangle it you know yeah. it's like it's yeah. a, uh, uh, <sighs> it it did get pretty convoluted i i have complicated feelings about it because i i hate love triangles yes. like they're there is no other trope in fantasy yeah. that I absolutely hate. But I feel like it was kind of this thing where Fen was like, well, I don't want to date either of you. Like, mm, I'm, yeah. I'm not really interested in either of you. And over time, like, she kind of warms up to Aaron and stuff. But it was kind of this interesting thing because it wasn't really, even though it was happening, I feel like it wasn't really focused on as far as the story went like like the story itself did not rely on her choosing one or the other mm -hmm. um and so i feel like it kind of happened really naturally where we see you know Kay just being an idiot with women and not knowing yeah. how to talk to her and then aaron comes in and actually like treats her like a person and just talks to her like how you would talk to anybody else and she's like oh, okay like he's kind of cool and it kind of goes from there. And then we see, you know, Cade coming in again and trying again. And then we get gr really great scenes with Aaron where they're on the ledge and he's like, you can do this. Like, I believe in you. Like, you can, you know, conquer your fear of heights or whatever and get across this ledge. Yeah. And moments like that, I, I thought were really good. Um, the second book has a lot of love triangle stuff that yeah. but a different yeah. one with yeah, two, was, of the, was, two of the three yeah i was like <laughs> man he's he's really going for it again um i didn't see that coming though did you i didn't see that lo second love triangle yeah coming i kind of just felt like ah oh, we've already done this song yeah again. yeah like, why are we doing it again yeah yep. <laughs> I, I did I did feel like why are we doing this again yeah. and like the second book really made me not like Fen a whole lot there was a lot of stuff she did in the second book that I was just like oh my god Fen yeah I just don't think she knew what she wanted yeah, and I yeah. Think she yep. was the type of person and he needed the guy that was going to be forward and like take yeah. the first step and 
I think Aaron's the type of guy who's not going to take the first step until he knows it's going to be reciprocated. Yeah, so right. it's like he do it, didn't do it. Um, he wanted to, but he didn't yeah. because he was yeah. scared. Yeah. Yeah. And right. so, you know, Fen admits like she knew she wasn't, he was in love with her and like she still didn't act on it. And so I understood later why she was the way that she was, but yeah. it, it doesn't make her storyline less frustrating. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> So yeah, let's go on to uh let's talk about Keel for a minute here. Uh Ooh, we yeah. get we get this, oh man, this whole situation was so crazy. Yeah. Where Keel goes back home and his brother is in his house taking, Eating, care, di- of, yeah. taking yeah. care of his family. It felt like he was intruding on yeah. something and it was supposed to be like his home, his wife, yeah. his child. So, and it was his I, brother, which added yeah. like a whole extra layer of weird. Yeah. I was like, dude, could you imagine going back home, your wife and you like, you've been doing all this stuff out in the world to try to make life better for not only everyone, but also to bring home more money than you would farming. Uh, and then like his wife is super frustrated, which, you know, understandable. I, I get it. I don't know how I would feel about my spouse going away for a year or more at a time. Um, but she's super frustrated. And then here's his brother who pulls him aside and is like, look, you take off and I just basically marry your wife and take care of your family. Like, yeah, but I understood where shit. he was coming from. <laughs> yeah. I I understood it, and I don't. Ooh, you okay. can't act like Keel was out there doing this for their own good only. He didn't sure. want to be home. Oh, yeah, he, yep. he could yeah. have stayed home and worked. It worked and made money and been with them twenty four seven. But he, it felt like a noose around his neck to him. So he was physically incapable of that. So like, when he would try to act like this hero, like, oh, well, I'm out on these missions, making money and keeping you fed. It's he's acting like he was doing it completely selflessly when he yeah. wasn't. And that yeah. that pissed me off. Yep, yeah, I would agree. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and considering that the, the ultimatum that his wife gave him towards the end was like, here's your chance to be yeah. a dad. Here's your chance to be my husband. Here's your chance. It's right here for you right here. Are you going to take yeah. it? Doesn't take she was it. finally making him choose. And that's, yeah, she and that's saying, like, can't that do this to me back just, and forth just sells, anymore. yeah, it just sells the point of exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. I, like, as much as he thinks he's kind of helping and doing this thing, like, he's really not. Like, he might send some money, but you have to, you, uh, you have to be a dad. You have to be there for yeah. your child who's sick, right? Like, you can't yeah. just run away from that. Um, and that just shows, like, I don't think he had the full commitment. I think he loved him for sure, yeah. loved his son, loved his wife, but he just wasn't able to do what he had to do. Yeah, yeah, I I I would agree. I have a slight counterpoint on the last time that okay. he left. Uh because that time he had a he had the ability to get a remedy for his son. And he's like the only way I can do this is if I go. But did he get the remedy though? No, I mean he ended up dying, but he was like, you know, the the only way that I can fix this thing with my son is if like, I wouldn't be able to do it here. Like I would, I would be here being a dad and I would watch my kid die. Yeah. But and, that's what his wife had had to do this yeah. whole time alone. Yeah, and I don't think the money he was bringing home was like significant enough to justify how long he seems to be away at a time. Yeah. And it must be nice to, you know, jaunt off wherever you want and go on adventures and do what you're doing and then get to come home to a home and a wife and a child just expect them to pick up where you left off so i i never i never really liked keel (laughs) yeah yeah i'm i'm conflicted for sure so do we remember what ended up happening with his family did they all die did did the crotons kill them all no i i don't think they died no so they were where okay so you know how after the emperor's uh son is killed and they go and they like raise a yeah. whole town i think that's the town that they completely burned out oh so oh. then they could be dead yeah i'm pretty okay. sure they're they're okay. all dead yeah, yeah. Oh. i um because at one point clisson i think is talking about it when he's saying oh well the emperor missed up he's so angry he like burned that whole village to the ground it'll forever be remembered this way um 
So I think it's off the map. And Probably, I think that's yeah. where they're from. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks, yeah. dude. I, I want to quickly talk about one other scene where they're in the ruins of Skardvard or whatever that was. <gasps> that was one of my favorite parts of, of the yeah. book was without, when they're there. Without a doubt, yes. And they're, my favorite scene is when they're fighting the shadows. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. they realize that they have to fight the shadows with their shadows. Yeah. And but then if they can like duck and like get out of the way, they realize they don't even like have to fight them. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so they're like, they're taking all this damage. They don't know how it's happening. And they're like, oh, if if Fen like shoots her arrow and we see the shadow hit the other shadow like along the wall. I thought that was such a cool mm-hmm. concept. Yeah, it's just really, really neat. Yeah, it was like, how I've... did he come up with that idea to to do yeah, that? I've got yeah. another uh, thing about the well, both books. But what do you what did what do you guys think of Vika? The introduction of Vika, kind of her being a druid, that stuff. Oh, was... and she was on her own when they first introduced. Yeah, her, right? and, then, and yeah. then she saw prophecy, and she thought that Garrick was the prophesied savior of mm-hmm. Asia. Um, right. But then her journey with them and learning to like kind of love them and protect them, because in Emberblade, you know, she 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 like does a ritual and she like merges with the deep whatever the king whatever yeah, his name that, was, the ten crown demon, king or yeah. seven crown king um and does all that and i was like man this for for a chick that like just just kind of came in here like like she's really sticking to her metal like yeah mm-hmm. kind of making sure that she does what she needs to mind you it doesn't really work out but right you think she's doing the right thing and i love the whole druid druidic stuff yeah too. i really enjoyed that um kind of a, like a little like a spiritual magic system you know which is yeah kind of cool. and the animal familiar yes like, i really like yes, that is awesome um i loved like them being brought in i loved their storyline i would say the only thing was like towards the end vika got a little too sanctimonious yeah yeah right? sure. and she seemed to just go from like zero to a hundred yeah. yeah out of nowhere and i was a little confused by that i, I hadn't seen it coming that way yeah I, I think that that mostly happened because there's like a, at least a three year time gap there is, yeah. between books. And so during that time, I think that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like Aaron and everybody else was kind of going from like village to village, kind of like showing kind people. Of, yeah, race support for the end. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think during that time, she just started getting like geared up more and more. And it kind of touched on it in the first book where she believed that she was this uh kind of a chosen one herself like kind well, of she, a, she was sort of but you know she she believed that like the the ancients have chosen her and then she gets kind of humbled at the end of the book and she's like oh like it's not it's not my power it's me like humbling myself and then and that's when she can to... use the light against right she uses it right. against one of the, the oh yeah. so yeah. are you saying it was never really from the aspects to begin with it was no just... it was no it, it was... was it was but but she was just thinking about it in the wrong way because yeah the oh, way she was okay. taught was to think about it like um as her power as her power but it's not it's theirs and you're just a vessel and when vessel. she realizes right. that she, she has her staff and she like yeah forces the the dread knight away which right. Is, which well, they, is cool cool scene. They had the saying where it was like if you're not seeing the signs it's because you've forgotten how to read how them to or see or... them. Yeah. 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 How to listen to them. Um I thought that was really like a really good line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I think that over time that kind of that humility kind of wore off and she got yes. back into like believing that she's like uh the chosen of the aspects and that yeah. she's the one that you know, she's like, I have the chosen one here with the Ember Blade. And there's even someone that tells her, um, it was one Adelaide. of it, well, it was one of her elders. I think it was the guy, or, or maybe uh, or maybe it was Agley. And they're like, like, who knows if you had a real vision? Like, we drink all sorts of poisonous mm-hmm. concoctions, like for all you know, like maybe you know, maybe it wasn't a prophecy. And that was the first time where there's really some doubt coming in because you see all this from Vika's perspective. Um, And then after a while, it's like, oh yeah, maybe she's not like, maybe she's not who think who she thinks she is. Yeah. Um, So yeah, she was, she was an interesting character. Definitely not my favorite, but 
I think Ruck was probably my number two favorite. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, dude. I loved Ruck. Ruck was yeah. just such a good anytime, character. Anytime there's an animal companion that yeah. has feelings or somebody can understand them, I'm sold. Yeah, yeah well, really in a sold. lot of ways, it reminded me of Farseer. And mm. in Farseer, he also had a wolf. Those. It's like, you have not read Farseer? I haven't either. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, first of all, you need to read them, and then we, we have to talk about them. Okay. Because yeah, right. if you're ready to have your heart just ripped out of your chest oh, repeatedly. Marley me type stuff here? No, but okay. just with phenomenal storytelling, attention to detail, the overall arc, and the way that things are tied in from book one to, like, book six. It's... Yeah. I I nope. never read Hobbit Robin Hobb before those books, and after that, I purchased every book that she has ever written right. because I was wow. like, my notes right now. I was like, this woman is a genius, and I want to read every single thing she could write. I agonized over those books for so long. It... Two hours later, before we move on to the Shadow Casket, there is just a couple scenes that I want to touch on, and one of them is this reversal with Garrick where Aaron has sold out Garrick to... Oh, um, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. And then he's walking with Garrick, and Garrick is telling Aaron about, like, his father and how they knew each other and how his father betrayed him. And they get to whatever it was, like a store or some, some like, room or whatever. And Garrick's like, what am I going to find on the other side of that door? And Aaron tells him everything. He's like, there's, yeah. like, a number of people with crossbows on the other side that are going to try and shoot you and whatnot. And he's like, well, maybe they'll find you a better target and pushes him into the room mm -hmm. yeah. and nobody's there. Yeah. He's, he's like, I, I fed you the wrong information. And he um, was like, I've been doing this for a long time. I can yeah. tell when somebody has been yep. turned or is right. fighting a guilty conscience, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like wrestling his conscience. And he was like, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was such a fantastic scene. And then uh uh what's his name? Klein. He uh he sells oh, Garrick out. Fucking Klein. Or Keel. Keel. Oh. Keel. 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 Yeah. Okay. I was like, wait. <laughs> Klein, yeah. You're right, Klein, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so it was it was such a sad turn of events for it to be like, oh good, they avoided Garrick dying only for Keel to then sell him out. Yeah, that was like a twist within a twist to me, you know, yeah. because like is good. Aaron did what he had to do to get out of, you know, Clisson's yeah. clutches. Yeah. And so I had originally thought I was like, oh, he's just gonna leave and not do it. That like right. he's just anything to get out. Like they were already looking for him. So what difference if you like make more of an enemy yeah. Yeah. of Clisson? So I was hoping he wasn't gonna sell him out. But for them, like right after that heartwarming moment for like Keel to immediately yeah. sell out Garrick, that was that was hard because yeah. it felt like we just went through this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But yeah. you know, when you look at what happened to Keel, I really am not surprised that that's where the author took the storyline. For him sure. Because for, he yeah. was destroyed. He was broken. He was really yeah. no good to anyone at that point. So. Yeah. I wasn't surprised, but it was heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, I'm sad. Just to, I, you just touch on this, Sam, but I, I do want to just kind of emphasize the first time that that Aaron tries to sell out Garrick and and they Garrick throws him in there and they realize that the, the talk that they have shortly after that, because Aaron thinks he's going to kill me. Like, I just sold him yeah. out. Like, he's going to kill me. And Garrick's yeah. like, Garrick's like, you know what matters is you did, you didn't. You yeah. didn't yeah. do it in the end. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, that's, that's pretty powerful yeah. right there because mm -hmm. you can make mistakes and do something that's not good but you can rectify it like you can uh -huh. you can change your mind and do the right thing instead of the wrong thing which is really powerful and he gave him up till like the last possible second exactly <laughs> exactly and and, and then he did he, he almost like he was he was kind of showing him like what his feelings are like like yeah. he, i think he knew that like this kid didn't want to sell him out and so he gave him every last chance and at the end he makes that internal decision and it's like yeah. i don't want to do this there's people in there and i was like dude that's that's solid that's true it's such a big turning point yeah. for aaron yep. and you know i think every character has that moment yeah. somewhere in the book for the most part so that 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 could have been his like really big for like, sure okay yeah. i'm in it like this yeah. is it this that's is what right. i'm doing yep. this I isn't a game mind. anymore i'm not doing this we're gonna go yeah. for it yeah i'm not just trying to get to safety anymore yeah. like i want to be a part of this dude that that's so funny or so cool that you 
you bring that up because I hadn't really thought about that before. And it's kind of a through line to Cade in the second book mm. where yep. like, yep, you know, he up until the very last minute, Cade made a decision not to yes. sell them out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is um, awesome, dude. And yeah. uh, it's, yeah, so that's, that's cool how that's like a bit of, uh, I don't know if it would be foreshadowing or if it would just be like a through line or something, yep. but that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah. We also, we get to see Fen's backstory a little bit. And I think that this is really great because we learn where her uh, fear of heights comes from. Oh God. And, yeah. Yeah. Brutal dude. Brutal. And, yeah. And her father had her in the woods. Like, so her, her mom died and it sent her father into like this massive depression. And so he would take her out into the woods to show her that she cannot count on anybody. Yeah. And just like absolutely ruined any form of like trust or familial bond. Reliance. Yep. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And, uh, and so he took her out there and she, she was falling off like uh, kind of like an embankment and he like grabbed her and then he like looked at her in the eyes while he let her go. And this is like the darkest shit ever. Dude. She had she had to crawl back home with broken legs, crawl through the woods for like days yeah. to get back home. And then once she got back home, he, he put her in a cart and took her into town. I'm like, she that said is... she never spoke another word to him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Fuck. dude, that like I've I've read a lot of like grimdark. I'm like, that is some of the darkest shit I've yeah. read like that that is savage dude yeah savage savage is a great word to portray that oh it's fucking God. savage well then if you like that then i would say <laughs> so I like, I got is slightly shit, like grimdark in the sense okay. where is it's it? like okay all right i'm excited uh, yes. i'm gonna read it yes. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna finish cradle in the next couple days and i'm gonna yeah. start it okay yeah. i'm i'm excited to hear yeah. what what gabe thinks of this i'll if he, if he likes it i'll i'll read it for sure um, so then I have, I have one more and that is of course, Cade falling to his death. Oh yeah. And this is, you know, Cade is kind of on this beam. The whole place is on fire and falling apart. You know, Aaron has him it, like he's grabbed his hand. It's just yeah. this great like movie moment where like Aaron's like, I'm not leaving you. And Cade's like, you're not leaving me. Yeah. I'm, I'm leaving you. Yeah. And he lets go and fall. It's like, Dude, oh, gnarly. Yeah. It's so good. It's such a good scene. Oh my yep. god. And I was I was heartbroken, dude, after. Like I was just so like Ooh. utterly sad. Yeah. About oh, about but... that situation. And then seeing the effect that it has on Aaron too. That's what fucking got me, dude. Cause like this yeah. dude is just just cannot live broken. without his brother, right? <laughs> broken and just broken. bad, you know? You know, I don't think I got that upset though when Kate died, because I think for something in me i was like i know, you know? he's not dead yeah I think, you do and, yeah. and when i started the second book i'll be honest with you i immediately like opened it to a random page to see if there was any Cade dialogue yeah. why was there was sam's because like me dude sam's i needed to know that? That. i needed yeah. to know so like i could put the thought away and like enjoy oh the book like, and just know that he's yeah, still there I eventually yeah I knew he was coming back. Oh. I just needed the confirmation, and then I can read the book and not worry about it at all. I can. Sam, enjoy you are just oh like me. God. You are just like me. That that stuff yes. tears Spencer's brain apart. He I just can't even understand okay. how that's possible. I could Spencer, never do that to myself. I There's because, no way I could. And do I was that. in like fifth grade, and I remember this vividly. This girl on the bus said. I read the last page of every book before I start it. And I was like, Oh God, I was so scarred by it. I remembered it for <laughs> yeah. years and years. I was yeah. like, what is wrong with you? Like you read the end. But as I've gotten older and with these fantasies in certain situations, I'm like, I just want to know, like the, oh, it'll be all, it'll be all I think about otherwise. So like, yeah. if I know he's alive, then and I can then, get back to the real storyline and I'm good. Yep. And then here, here's a question for you. Cause this is the thing that I think spent that Spencer is bad about all this is like if you learn something before it happens does it ruin it for you because it doesn't for me no not and at all it, oh. it used to be like that for me yeah. where it would ruin it but now yeah. so like a really good example is um sanderson's stormlight archive mm. the first time through i was like ah, it's okay you know the yeah. second time through 
I was like, oh my God, this book is phenomenal. And I realized why was because now that I know all the outcomes, I'm not constantly worried about, is this person going to die? Are they going to make it through this situation? Are they going to get caught? So I could focus on the minor details. Just the story, yeah. Yeah. Because if not, it was like, oh my God, are they going to die? Like, I can't read it as if it's not a real person. So I'm genuinely worried that this person is going to die. But if I know they're going to make it, then I can focus on other things besides just my fear of the moment. (laughs) Yeah. Spencer, yeah, I, like I said, I, Spencer can't understand <laughs> that, but I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah I'm totally I, with you. I have an obsessive brain and, you know, I need to shut it off if I can in certain ways. Yes. And so in yes. this situation, it was like, all right, just tell me. Is Kay going to be back in the second book? Uh, okay, he has dialogue. I'm yeah. good. I know we I know we made it somehow. And that the maddest, the plot. <laughs> the maddest that Spencer's ever been at me is me saying something that is a spoiler. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I was, I was just about to go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just about to, <laughs> to say that because Gabe and I obviously have very, very like polar opposite views on, <laughs> on spoilers. And, uh, you know, Gabe and I are obviously best friends. Yeah. At the end of almost every single phone call, we say, like, I love you, yep. you know? Yeah. There's only been, I want to say, two, <laughs> two times in my life knowing Gabe that I've been like genuinely upset with him. And the first time, Oh God, both both are because of spoilers. And the first time was because uh, the last of us two had just come out and he had read an article about, and, and like, I don't know, like, I don't think he knew necessarily that. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember this one. I don't, I don't ever remember you saying anything about this one. Yeah, I I think I think you suffered we, in silence. Suffered in silence. <laughs> oh no, I I got upset with you for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I remember we we were on a job site and I was I was pretty upset, but there, it was something oh, that like was forever ago. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> so right, yeah. you you and I were on a job site and I was like, dude, The Last of Us Two just came out today. I'm gonna go home and play it. And you're like, oh, that's the one where this person dies. Oh, uh, but that's not it's and not I'm like, intentional. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't I'm, mean that. I'm like, I'm like, you did not just say that. <laughs> and, and, and you're like, you're like, uh, you're like, oh yeah, I I just read it like in this article. Like they were they were saying that this is the one where I'm like, well, whatever article you read is like heavy spoilers, spoilers. Like, <laughs> i'm like somebody just spoiled that hard yeah. oh. and you're like oh okay and like i i knew you didn't mean no to do i know it, i was yeah. i was so like <laughs> like i was so mad and then the the second one was um what was that there was, book there, there was a the, king's dark tidings one yeah well it wasn't yeah. king's dark tidings it was the the was standalone the prequel, yeah the yeah no renown yeah yep. that one yeah. i i truly didn't yeah. feel like i was spoiling anything yeah, I really because didn't. I think I think that you you thought that I was reading at the same pace as you. No, I, was, I just I was had thought that, that in the, in a podcast we had talked about that exact thing. Well, yeah, right? but it was a theory at that point. It wasn't like a hard and fast. Like, <laughs> but it, I mean, it was like I was sure of it at the time. Dude. You see the difference here, Sam? Where I'm like very. <laughs> no, you you can't even. You actually remind me of at work. Um, we like to do Wordle and we all like every morning, what'd you get? What'd you get? You know? And my boss constantly, like, he likes to get it in as few as possible. So he'll take all day to do it, but we want to talk about it. And right. so if he hears even the tiniest, oh, like, like Stop. oh, it was, it was a tough one today. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so oh, you literally, literally don't want to hear anything. And I think that's how Spencer is about. That's, yeah. like, yep, he that's doesn't want to know. He needs to go on a blank slate. Which yeah. is cool. And I respect that. I'm not, that's not a bad thing. I think that you probably <laughs> get a little bit own. more. Yeah. A little bit more excitement out of those things, but yeah. See, and, and like going like exactly like going back to the, the shadow casket, like the Cade reveal mm-hmm. was like, oh, holy shit for me. Like yeah. that was I, like, I didn't oh my see God. that coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, believed yeah, I, I didn't read ahead, story. but yeah, I yeah. was surprised for sure. When Cade came. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So you, you, I'm sorry. I thought you meant the Cade reveal like, uh like not the, the reveal the like, the double cross <laughs> yeah that that was surprising too but just yep. like even the initial reveal that he was alive like up until aaron said kate is that you or whatever he says yeah i didn't i didn't never think thought it, that I, he'd come back yeah yeah i was yeah. like oh, i was like see, kate is dead 
I did immediately. I was like, oh. he was too big of a character in book one. And I was like, even though this author likes to kill off characters, like has no issue killing people off. I I just knew. I was like, their story yeah. wasn't over yet. Yeah, it, they need more. Just beginning. I was like, there's no way that Kate isn't coming back in some way. And because it was such an ambiguous ending and we didn't see a body, I was like, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Very good point. So, so yeah, good point. We don't see a body. However, I thought it was interesting because I I thought he was going to stick to it because it was such a subversion of what you would expect. Like all your heroes are supposed to in some shape, make it through to the end. And here we have Chris Wooding doing like a Ned Stark moment where he's killing, I was going to say Ned Stark. <laughs> yeah. Where, where he's killing yeah. his main character yeah. in the first book. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, this guy has some balls. Balls. And yeah. I was like, man, that is that is so cool. That is such a big like subversion where we don't get to see the end of this character's arc. Like he is just dead. Um, yeah, and, and I, so, I liked how he brought people in and out so freely and that did add an element of like okay you will you never know what's going to happen because like look he's very willing to kill people off but I like that in the context of this group journey you know type of thing that you are able to easily bring people in and out yeah and have it work for the story where yeah, right. in other stories you if they're stuck in one place you can't really bring as many characters in and out but because it was a moving group of people on a heist that he was able to write people in and out and i like yeah. that it kept you on your toes of okay who's next <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah i had one quote that i did want to oh yeah go for from it book one so herod H- herod right how you say yeah. it Herod, who was yeah. in love with Orica, the girl who yep. yeah, how, she's Shang. the bard, the, the sard bard or whatever. Yeah, or the sard, sard bard. bard. Yeah. I like that. Sard, sard bard. bard. <laughs> yes. So he's, Herod is from a country, right? A different country where Harrow. <laughs> they don't show their emotions. Like yeah. you are meant to be a closed book. Everything is sneaky, double quips, all of that. And so he shamed his family by just up and leaving to f- leave and follow Orica. And he finally, towards the end of the book, like it was, it was pretty close to the end, um, is telling Cade the story of why he disgraced his family and how he left and followed Orica. Yeah. And he's talking about how he heard her play a song and he knew like, okay, I have to leave. I'm in love with her. And I thought it was really nice that Cade says to him, he goes, I hope I hear a song that one day. It was just like a, such a simple, sweet, like yeah. Herod thought that Cade was going to make fun of him and be like, you idiot, you gave up your whole life, your whole family, your title, everyone you know, because like yeah. you heard a song and it made you want to follow the person. So I thought it was just such a nice, sweet moment where he's yeah. like, I hope I hear a song like that one day. I just thought it yeah. was so sweet. Yeah, I I do like that moment a lot. Yeah, it yeah. was a really good, really good quote. So yeah, I guess let's uh let's go into the shadow casket. I don't think I have too much else for for Emberblade. Um it had it had a great ending. I loved how it kind of ended with all of them on the hill singing the song and it was very kind of hopeful and uplifting and looking forward to the future. And so then when we get into Emberblade, it was cool to get kind of a time jump kind of a three years yeah. later do you guys remember how the book opened i can't quite remember how the book how shadow casket opened so i think it opens like they have been traveling and like finding people to support the ember blade showing it to them uh and then oh aaron and fen are racing up that hill in the beginning oh I so yeah about so that. Fen can show them the, the sunset the miracle the everyday miracle yeah oh that's right yeah. they were going to the fell folk right yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, to try right. to bring the clans together. Yep. Yeah. Right. So I think it started like mid journey, and they weren't quite there yet. And it shows okay. Aaron like racing Fen up the hill because Aaron's like, my dad told me like this is a miracle that happens every day. Shows him the sunset or the sunrise, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, One and of then them. They, yeah. Then they get to the fair folk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Where? So by the way, this is something that I I think it's just one of those things that I just kind of missed throughout the books. What is Morganholm? 
I thought it was like kind of a region that the fell folk inhabited. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think it was okay. like a main city. I think that Let me like look the, at the map. The fell folk and the other oh, there's tribes. A map. That's oh, she's powerful. got a map. Hell yeah. Because yeah, mm -hmm. at the end it says that the Crodens took over Morgan home. Okay, so Morgan home. Here it is. And so I was like, wait, where is Morgan home? It's like in the mountains, Drover's Pass. Oh, okay. And Hammer Hole and Salt Fork. So. I'm so bad with city names. City names are the <laughs> hardest for me to remember cities. Well, that's but... why I do both. Because if I just listened to the book, I wouldn't be able to place like the image of yeah. a written name to like the yeah. name that I'm hearing. Um, So I like have to go back and forth. No, I, that's, I that's good. That's wise. Audio. That's wise. Yeah. So let's talk about Clisson for a moment, dude. Mm. He had oh. such a bigger role to play. <laughs> yeah. In yeah, but in... I liked it. Yes, yep. me too. He was I... one of my favorites. Yeah, I like thoroughly enjoyed every single one of his chapters. None of yep. them was like, oh, I want this to be over. I was actually like, oh, I want more. And he's very gray, as you've said yeah. before. He is such a gray character. Every time you think like, okay, he's moving towards good. Then he does something really bad again. You're like... But his storyline is so fascinating from here's another, you know, going from the bottom, getting his shit together again. Um, I think that whole seance thing is going to play a huge part in the next book. Yeah, that's where I think it's going. Because yeah. even his he, even his daughters are seeing yes. visions of shadow people. Yeah. Pretty weird. Well, and they say that like that's that's what the Vika was all about that like the the realm between Earth and the shadow realm is being destroyed. No, yeah, yeah. but they Clisson, say it's like a ravine and it's yeah, getting closer and closer yep, yep one thing that i like about clisson especially in the second book is his motivations are not in my opinion not for his country they're right, for him yeah. like right. he just wants his kids and he does everything he manipulates fucking sneaks around tells people mm -hmm. that he's a, a an occult you know he joins that whole cult right just all yeah. out of yeah. him doing research and knowledge doesn't give a shit about it just so he can be with his daughters, uh, which 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 was cool because it's like you know he he's like a a high ranking guy in the the Croton Empire, right? Like he's trying to like go higher, yeah. but the only reason why he's trying to go higher is so he can like take <clears throat> his kids back and like say fuck right. you to his wife, ex wife. Say yeah. listen, you fucked me over. I'm gonna fuck you over now. Here's my kids, you know. Yeah. 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 And he yeah. he basically implied that they are dead at the that was like the final chapter in the book right where his kids died no the, the wife the ex-wife yeah. oh. yep he implied yeah, he had her that her was yeah. interesting yeah i was yeah. like i think that's what i'm supposed to be getting from this yep that's, i think you're right that's kind of what i got too because it you know he brings the the shadow casket back to the doctor and i think by doing that he asked like a favor he's like i want my kids back <laughs> And I want these people to go away. Well, and he's an overwatchman now, right? Yeah. That, like his original goal, he finally right. reached it. Um, I I also thought that was actually more of a jump scare, I would say, for me being alive than Cade was. Because the, in the Ember Blade, he gets hit with the burning stuff that Vika throws. And then they shut him in the, um, the vault. And you're like, oh, he's he's dead and then he explains oh, later how right. yeah. there was like a latch so he was able to get them out and he made it and i was that i was more surprised about than Cade. Yeah. i didn't see that coming yeah it's true that's i had true. to go back i was like didn't he die i was like am i remembering <laughs> this wrong didn't right. he die <laughs> yeah i actually forgot about that from the first book yeah but yeah, I mean, yeah, he was a great character in this book. I think the first book did a pretty good job of, you know, you you see him as a villain for a long time, mm -hmm. and then he goes home, and he, you see his family and his kids. Yeah. And you don't really know quite what his wife is like at that point, but you see his interactions with his kids, and you're like, oh, like, he is like a person. Like, yeah, he's yeah. on the other side, but he is like a person. He yeah. loves his kids he loves his family and and all that kind of stuff and so in this book it was really interesting to see him humbled mm -hmm. and like demoted and stepped on and all this stuff and you start to feel kind of bad for him yeah. and throughout the book i was like oh man like i'm actually 
I'm actually like finding myself rooting for Clisson. Yes. And as <laughs> as he goes to like the the seance and all this stuff and him just like working. I was talking to Gabe about this on the phone. I was saying, you know, it was interesting to see how manipulative and how just kind of smart he is with all that political maneuvering because yeah. he goes to his uh next in command and he's like you know please don't send me to this island i have these kids and his next in command doesn't care and so then he brings out this book he's yeah. like i have this gift for you and gives him like this occult book and the guy's like mm, you know if you want to join me yeah <laughs> you, yeah at, the, at this meeting you can and Clisson's like, oh, I'm very into the occult. I love yeah. doing all this. And then he even goes so far as to like memorize certain like occult teachings yep. so that he can talk with his superior about that specifically. And so we see them on the horse ride out to the manor or wherever they did the seance. And Clisson is able to more or less keep up in conversation about this occult stuff and it's like oh he's like really deep like he's <laughs> he's got like workings within workings he's to, smart he's yeah. very intelligent and so yeah i i really really enjoyed that about his character and same as you every single time he was on the p on on the page uh when it was his pov i was like oh yeah i'm, I'm here for this yeah. i really <laughs> i'm really enjoying the scene yeah so I liked his arc. I I enjoyed it. And I felt it was a good palate cleanser somewhat like between the main yeah. part of the story, the main storyline. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Fen for a minute. I think that she just makes <laughs> like bad decision after bad decision. And like, it's played off in like a positive light, I guess. But like, if it were me, like I would be so pissed. <laughs> Because so at first there's this whole thing with her and Aaron and they're like miscommunicating and neither of them are doing a very good job of, you know, communicating that they like each other. Yeah. And then she goes off with, uh, was the guy's name Odeus or Odean or whatever? Edian? Something. Edian, Edian, yeah, Edian? something like that, Edian. Odin. And so she goes off with him and it's like, all right. And it sucked so much because you can tell from Aaron's point of view he's like seeing them together and he's like oh my god he's like i have to be in the same group with her and she's with this other guy and like i hate him and it's like oh dude like that that hurts um and so like that whole situation then she ends up being pregnant did you did you call that before it was revealed yeah yeah, yeah, I thought when when she was starting to get sick, I was like, I bet yeah. she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. I thought Fen and Eddie were like a better pairing than oh, I did. Fen and Aaron. I thought I thought Eddie was such an asshole. Really, I thought yeah. they were both like of a similar <laughs> lifestyle, though. So that's why I thought they were kind of better together. Wild yeah, hunters, maybe. I I just really didn't like any of the faith or the what are the folk the, fen the folk, fell fell folk uh, yeah yeah the fell folk i i just didn't really like any of them i thought that they were like i don't know they just were all kind of assholes they were all just kind of like in the way i was like mm, i don't know <laughs> but um but yeah and then we get so then fen takes the herbs and they don't work and so then she carries on with the pregnancy and Aaron tries to come in to like comfort her. And so does Cade. And she's like, no, I don't want to talk to either yeah. of you. Both of you leave me alone. And, and Aaron was just kind of like, and I would have had the same reaction. Aaron was like, fine. And he like goes off and does his own adventure. I'm like, way to go, Aaron. Yeah. And, uh, and then she starts to like ease up as she's further along in her pregnancy. Like she doesn't have as many, you know, issues to deal with and they come back together and it seems like they're about to get back together there. She gives him the Ember blade and then she tells the leader of the fell folk about the, the whole thing with the other crew, the, the other guy. I, that was... I understood why she did it. Yeah. I, oh, I, 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 I did. I understood why she did all that she did. 
I totally she, feel for her. I hated they were it. gonna screw them over, yeah. and they had taken her in. They were taking care of her, and they but, weren't being given a hundred percent of the information, and they were asked to being put their lives on the line for it. And I, I was happy when she told them. I was like, oh, good. They should have known. Yeah. I I felt the exact opposite because That's I was so like funny. I was like that that means <laughs> that means giving the ember blade the thing that this whole group has like given their lives you know 10 times but, over for giving it to these random like woodland savage people but think about like the these ultimate barbarians. goal though think about the ultimate goal regardless if they're barbarians or not the goal is to just unite Asia <laughs> and from the ending of the book she can the queen can absolutely do that She's got the yeah. power. She's got the following. She can do that easily. So Maybe, in my, in my head, not, I'm like, it, that works perfect. Like it's going to be, yeah, but it's going to be like a super primitive Aussie. They're not, they're not that primitive, dude. They're just tribal people. They're, yeah, they're not, they like might not live in the head. city, but it's not like they're, <laughs> it's not like they were like, you know, 700 years old and lived in the past. Like they might have to know. hunt for their food. They might not have a restaurant to go to, but it's yeah. not like they're savages. I don't know. I, I figured that they they were kind of like the Druids where they were into all this like weird spiritual stuff. I never, and... I never felt that at all. No, really? I didn't think that. Yeah. I, I was rooting for them and I just thought it wasn't fair that, you know, I hated Mara. That's what I was going to yes. say. I hated yeah. her. And so the fact that she wanted to like convince them to help them, but then they would still be under the thumb yeah. of, that they were fighting to like, you know, oppress. I didn't think that was fair that they just wanted to use them. And so I was, I was really happy when Fen let them in on the secret that was being held from them. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. I, I, I guess I just, I really like a main character. And so I really hated that now Aaron doesn't have the Ember yeah, Blade. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, like, well, that yeah, was a weird twist I didn't see coming. Yeah. I yeah, thought that I'm, was weird. I'm like, Aaron is supposed to be the guy that like has the Ember Blade. And so to give it away to to them, I was like, man, Aaron is supposed to be the guy who like has the Ember Blade. But yeah, so that I was kind of see why they, they did it though, in a sense, only because Aaron's not a great swordsman. He's not some not much of a leader movie. either, you know, like he's not he's not gonna be the king. Yeah, and he doesn't seem like he wants that responsibility either. Yeah. And if so, the Ember Blade is meant to unite everyone. Well, and he and he's a, he's a Don Ward, Don Guard, Don Guard, Don Warden, Don Warden. Yeah. Don Warden. And the, their entire the reason why they are made is to carry the Ember Blade until they can give it to somebody who can rule. Yeah, they're, I think that's not supposed role to rule. Him. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, I don't think he's full on King Emperor material. Yeah, see, at yeah, least not I, yet. Not and I'm yet. not saying that the I'm not saying that the wife of the the fell folk, you know, their husband died from the crazy fang yeah. people or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying she is either, but she's she's already kind of got, you know, she she was able to unite yeah. all all the tribes, right? Even mm -hmm. though it seemed like a couple ran off, it, that wasn't the case. Oh, that was great! Surprise I didn't attack, see that right? Coming. Like she united all of the all <laughs> yeah. of the fell folk uh, in one yeah. community, and just even that's a pretty big tall order, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's fair. I I felt kind of weird about her just in the way that like I felt like she kind of came out of nowhere. Like like her husband died and then like she was mentioned as having survived the fire. Yeah. And th mm -hmm. and then we don't hear anything about her for like the whole book. And then it's only at the end where she comes in again and Aaron gives her the sword. I'm like I wish this had been like a character that was like that was built up and like shown to the reader that she is a good leader because mm -hmm. when when he handed her the blade i was like wait who is this again and i was yeah. like oh yeah it's the wife of the guy she survived i'm like why I, i'm like i don't i don't feel anything for this character i'm not like oh yeah she should have the blade yeah because i yeah. don't know her at, <laughs> at all um and so I, I just felt like that was a weird choice i thought the same thing i felt there was no build up it was just yeah. out of nowhere and it was like okay yeah 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 so anyway yeah fen fen was a little iffy for me this but like i liked her like i liked reading about her i thought wooding did a great job writing her but just like her in this fantasy world i was like yeah God, damn it <laughs> yeah you're annoying <laughs> yeah <laughs> um 
yeah, we talked about the whole Cade slow reveal. Um, oh, so this is what I was going to say at the end of our Ember Blades segment. I, I do kind of feel like he should have stayed dead because um, we were talking about like the whole Ned Stark thing yeah. and like killing off your character. I'm like, it would have been great if Wooding had like committed to that and it would have been this thing of like, no, Cade is dead. He was a main character and he was he died halfway through his character arc. I think that would have been so cool. But I I do understand bringing him back and whatnot. We get the whole asylum scene where they find out uh, about oh yeah, that the was, Dread that was wild, dude. Dude, that whole scene was so creepy. Yeah. And the during- warder, fucking A, dude. The warder. Yeah. And we also learn, like, I was not expecting there to be, like, mad scientists in this <laughs> yeah. series. No, yeah. um, with, yeah. like, a thing on his face yeah. and said, like, and, yeah. and that yeah. the place was, like, covered in just human innards and gore yeah. and blood. And, and they, they go into that one room where hmm. the orderly is just, like, sitting in a chair staring at the wall. Like, that yeah. was super creepy. And the pigs. And- the oh pigs. yes that's yeah. right grab yeah. grabbing the pigs dude i love yeah. that scene yeah. when you freaking unleash well, because... the pounds of what you know pigs of yeah. Death. yeah that made me happy because i was annoyed with Cade and how Cade was like of course grub ran off and yeah and you're like, it you know, he did like not. no i know grub wouldn't do that he's definitely figured something out and then you literally hear the pigs start sure running enough yeah i exactly. was like <laughs> shut up Cade. you don't know yep. what you're talking about <laughs> exactly uh, yeah and that's when we kind of get we get to see what Cade went through and dude, this actually like kind of terrified me learning about what Cade went through after he was pulled out of the wreckage. Yeah. Could you imagine being in a room healing from injuries, someone coming in to nurse you every day and they do not speak to you? No. And you have nothing to entertain yourself in any way. And you can't, you can't ask like, or I mean, you, you can ask, but nobody's going to answer. Like, where am I? What's going on? There's no way to like, know what's happening that, oh God, that would kill me. Yeah. That that, that was like a vicious, like that entire scene was a very vicious, like indoctrination of like, like when I think, I think about like a, like a severe cult where like somebody thinks that they are God. And yeah. they're going to yeah. show you that they are. And yeah. through that is basically psychological torture, right? That's yeah. that's what happened. Psychological yeah. torture. Oh. Like, Jesus, dude. Dude, that, that whole segment. And then part of it, too, is like going through all of that and then having the one thing that is your one source of entertainment is the Croton Doctrine. Oh. Yeah. And... Yeah. And, and that's it like, that's it dude that's the yeah. indoctrination right well and he yeah. didn't speak their language and they would only speak croton to him so he had to like really learn yeah you know, like yeah. Learn. think about yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy and then after all of that turmoil he gets put into like a loving croton family yeah. and so of course like can you imagine how that would mess with your emotions and like yeah of, of course you would be kind of turned to the other side by then yeah um, You're so desperate for any sort of human contact. Right. Yeah. He said he started crying when the man like picked him up to carry him up the stairs because it was like the first time he'd been like hugged Touch, essentially yeah. Yeah. in yeah. forever. So oh my God. That yeah. was tough. And I felt really bad. But then the things Cade said, I'm like, yeah, you were brainwashed, but you're saying yeah. very terrible things. So yeah. it's making me really not like make it really hard to root for you yeah yeah exactly exactly (laughs) right all right so let's uh let's talk about lacuna oh Uh, yeah or just the dread knights in general baby yeah i like that you looked up like the what lacuna meant because i didn't look it up and i was confused by like why that was one of the names right yeah it means uh like a an unfilled space or interval a gap yeah and and we see him kind of jump from like shadow to shadow kind of like jump Mm -hmm. from space to space and kind of flickering in and out of existence like static yeah and yeah i thought he was he's by far like my favorite dread knight because he's just like the uh like the assassin dread knight he's got like this tattered cloak and the only thing on his mask is like wasn't it just like a circle where his mouth is like it's just like a vent he's just so cool because like when they're hiding from him, 
they're looking below the boards and they even see him like underneath like kind of flicker in and out yeah. of existence underneath the boards i'm like dude that is such a cool power that is such a cool like his whole just like um well lacuna was the one who thought they stole the ember blade if you rem- remember right wasn't that lacuna when they when grub really had the ember blade and they thought they were stealing it from the chest listen remember he like laughs when they open it he's like that's not the ember blade yeah yeah so lacuna was the one who stole what they thought was the ember blade that wasn't was lacuna was the one that also had the ice powers everything froze yes okay okay yeah yeah then for sure yeah because heron walked in that's right like going to take it and that's when um all of that stuff happened. Yeah. So oh, okay. I thought Lacuna was like one of the most interesting ones because I think Lacuna was the first one we encountered after the original three from Emberblade mm-hmm. and we yeah. knew they were dead yep. and we knew how they could be killed. And like here it was kind of like, oh, how could they possibly kill this Dread Knight? Like yeah, this right. is so different than any of the other ones we'd encountered before on like a different level though yeah so so when when they're at the at the fell folks place and the the fang guard comes in yeah uh, and they're all hiding in the house which is yeah. the dread knight that walks right past them and doesn't that's see lacuna okay yeah so then lacuna doesn't die until the very end yeah okay. he, he dies in like the last chapter i'm trying to look through Trying to look through my notes here to see when I thought I wrote down when Lacuna died. Yeah, because I'm I just can't remember. I'm so interested now. Because I think I think it was uh, Grub who killed Lacuna. Or oh wait, okay. Here here was the question I had earlier. When Grub is in the Fang Castle and he's by himself. Yeah. And this is like after the invasion or whatever, mm-hmm. and he's running through the back doors, and all of a sudden there's this Dread Knight that's covered in knives. He's got throwing knives. He's got knives here, knives here, knives yeah. here. That's a dread knight that doesn't have a name, right? There is one that's mentioned at one point where they're like they brought two new ones in and they name them and then they don't. And the they third don't one say without a okay because like they do yeah. say that, that one grub did that's right kill at the end and it was badass because yeah. like he was like talking about the bone god. He's like crows, right. like all the crows were around like bone god. If you see me, like yeah, help me or whatever. And then the crows like, you know, fucking that kill was this. really interesting. Yeah, I was reading that late at night and i was like really really sick last night i was yeah. not feeling good yeah and so i was kind of going in and out and i i don't really remember how grub killed that book so killed that dread knight so yeah so so he he's in the castle he's trying to make his way to the the bottom floors where the the people are being held or whatever um and he hears some some crowds hides from him blah 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 and then they're talking and mm-hmm. then there's the, this dread knight that's just like covered in knives comes in and grub is like shit there there's a little boy that's hiding underneath the bed and grub's like should i right. should i save this boy or should i just leave like grub he, like leave. leaves comes and he back. says hey hey you know sharpie i'm over here or whatever that's blah right. blah blah yeah um and he's running from him back and forth and he makes it to this he climbs up the wall to this kind of like p- pagoda makes yeah. it up there and then he's like hey he can't climb up here and sure enough he's climbing with his knives and as he gets as grubs up there he sees all these crows around he has this moment of like like you know like the bone guard the bone god is like watching me and, and he's like well if if you're you know he has some inner monologue about like yeah. if you're gonna be there like why don't you help yeah um, and the crows go crazy and it makes the dread knight fall off the cliff oh okay yeah yeah there were there was a lot of dread knights falling off of things because herod <laughs> yeah. herod falls off the cliff and his dread knight gets impaled yeah and then i just remembered lacuna was following aaron and it was when all that explosion was going off and lacuna gets caught up in oh, the explosion. Okay. oh yeah okay yeah 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 and and so then grubs falling off the uh the walls of the castle and uh yeah, so I think, man, these Dread Knights were really, really good in this yeah. book. I, I really loved every time the Dread Knights came in. And Fen shot Mercy in the face. Yes, that was Mercy, sick, like, dude. lifted up yeah. the she's, visor. Boom. And she, like, didn't even know what she did. She's like, yeah, she was like, should I do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, was... <laughs> it was awesome. It was cool because she was under the influence of Mercy, but before she went into that state she had, she had let bow loose yeah. back yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. and so then she got like mesmerized and let go and her arrow just fucking nailed it so in cool. the face yeah so cool so good 
Yeah, I think the only thing I feel a little different on is I think I enjoyed the Dread Knights a little more in book one. Only oh, because really? only because it was basically the same three the whole time and they were like following them and the group just kept like yeah. barely away. barely missing them. Yeah, yeah I would I yeah. would agree for sure. And yeah. And I felt like the final battles which he with each of them was much more like it got a lot more detail than yeah. they did in the second book. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with you, Sam. I, I think that the yeah. th they seemed a lot, mind you, in the second they did too, but they seemed a lot more menacing in the first yes. book. Yeah, and it was yeah, just very fair. like visceral. Yeah, like, these yeah. things are like gods. It was like a constant kind of, threat yeah, hovering over exactly them. fear in everybody's book. mind. Whereas the second book, they're like, well, we've we've killed one, you know, yeah. like yeah. we could probably do it again. <laughs> yeah, right. and they just like kind of randomly popped up. Yeah. And so um, I think I just enjoyed him a little more in the first, yeah. but it's not to say I didn't enjoy it in the second No, book. for sure. I would agree. That's totally fair. They yeah. definitely were not as threatening in this yeah. book just because we know that they can be killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mercy was probably the one where it's like, how would you ever kill Mercy? Yeah. Like, how would you? How, no how can way. you combat this? Yeah. yeah. This is impossible. Yeah. Uh, sure. And so that that was kind of cool to see how she dealt with that one. But yeah, it makes me wonder. I I realized at the end of this book, I'm like, oh, they're all dead. So are they? Are they gonna bring in new Dread Knights in the next book? Well, I kind of hope not. They've been rounding up Sards for how many years now? They Long said. time. So yeah, there's I definitely wonder... more Sards camps out yeah. there that we have not gotten to yet. Yeah, so I think they have like some sort of steady supply of yep. Dread Knights to pull from that we don't know about yet. And they're yeah. being kept somewhere. I so... would agree. Did it? I also, I also have this feeling that, that, that they've got like, not only do they have like some steady Dread Knights, but I feel like that they've been like on top of the research for them. I feel like there's going to be like some ultimate insanely powerful like ultra D dread knight that they yeah have. ultron something, or something. crazy well, yeah i think that's crazy. what it's all leading to yeah you know with like um ozma Adra or whatever and yep. all of that and it's like how much power is too power too much power you mm -hmm. know right. like when do you stop and the whole thing with the crotons where they're like well the crotons overthrew these people and those people had overthrown these people it's a cycle like we're always right. gonna end up back where we started and so they talk about that fall of the second empire and how you know bridges are still standing from a thousand years ago but things that we've made don't last 20 years like right what were their lives like what kind of power did they have yeah. um and so i just wonder if that's the track they're on to, to get right. to that place again where they're finding out about magic magical artifacts yeah how to, how to make a uh, a weapon out of the shadow lands um, I think it's gonna play a much bigger part eventually. I think yeah, that's where yeah. it's all kind of he heading. Yeah, is okay. The Dread Knights are gonna be like the biggest part of it. Yeah, I'm I'm eager to see what's going on with the Dread because it didn't really get explained how they turn a Sard into a Dread Knight, right? No, it was more. It, yeah, that it does. They it, take parts from each one. Well, it, it's their blood. It's their blood. Well, yeah, but like the actual like process of well, how they. So remember when they're in the ward and they're downstairs and like he cuts open like an egg sack. Yeah. yeah. So, and so one it, that's it's, partially it's like an incubator. Comes out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they like, and they, they said like, there was a big metal right, canister yeah. with yeah. the tubes coming out of it. So they like essentially grow them. They're just right. manufacturing dread knights, dude. Yeah. 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 They so found crazy. some way with the sard blood, but I want to know more about that. For sure, that. yeah, yeah. We never, we know. never got down to the science of it. For sure, it was just kind of no, a vague, vague understanding that... of that it was sard blood that made it happen. Yeah. But how does it happen? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, then we get, uh, we get the reveal that Fen is pregnant. Prego. Oh man, I was like, God, that would be so hard for Eric. Yes. So obviously, at the end of the book, they they end up together and you know aaron's a good guy obviously he's gonna stick by fen no matter whose kid it is but that would just be like that that was such a tough time no, for that, that would part hurt of the dude. book yeah that would hurt or it's like he's like this guy that like i hated i have to like help raise his kid like ah uh. I, 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 I don't even real. think it's or, go ahead sam I was just to say, I think the whole reasoning behind her being pregnant, though, is because now Fen plays such a bigger part to Bricka, the queen, mm -hmm. because she's carrying oh. the, the next generation yes. of her family that she yeah. at that time thought was now wiped out, essentially. Yeah, that's true. So I think that's how it's going to play into it is like, oh, well, she's carrying our heir. 
Right. Yeah. So like that's why I think it was done. That's what yeah. I think like his intentions are with it. And that's why the second love triangle came about because there was basically like one girl in the group that they can right. get pregnant and bring this story <laughs> around with. Yeah. Um, so that's what I think it's leading up to. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think just not to defend Fen, but it, it, it she even says it in the thing, you know, she has she doesn't know about how her body works right? oh yeah no that yeah. was interesting and so she she's like i thought you could just like you say decided no to the baby. yeah like, no i didn't want a baby and so yeah. she, she's very innocent in that sense like she did yeah. go out and have sex and do all that but she she really truly didn't know that this would happen she had no right. idea that this was going to yeah. be a possibility um because she assumed that she could just choose not to you know right um and yeah. so there's kind of like a it's hard to explain i don't i don't blame her as much as i would with somebody else knowing what would happen right because like sure she wanted yeah. to go out and have fun have sex whatever but she didn't know that this was going to happen and so that's why i think aaron kind of like does she does she tell that to aaron i don't think she does actually no no, no it was a thought process in her head just in her she head was okay. like when she's like suffering in bed and feeling yeah like she's like i didn't know that. okay yeah okay. She yeah. literally says, she goes, I thought it was something you decided on. Yeah. Right. Like yep. it was a decision you made. And I'm yeah. like, well, how would that have worked? But okay. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I just feel bad for her kind of because like, because like, I because if she had the choice, if she knew she wouldn't have done yeah. it. Right. Like she right. didn't want to get pregnant. No. Yeah. Um, she didn't really know. But yeah, it's quite the. Yeah. That, that was an interesting revelation because you're like, oh, yeah. Like her dad like never abandoned her. yeah she never and, knew dude yeah and, and he would have never talked about anything like that no. anyways um and then she just kind of joined up with these rebels and when are they gonna ever sit her down and tell her how yeah. sex works <laughs> yeah. you know like yep not gonna happen yeah. it's not but gonna it also happen. made her like confront what her father had done to her yeah. and now she's got to think of like well, could I ever do that to my child? And so right. it really puts her in just like a bad headspace. Yeah. Such yeah. a bad headspace. And she has no one to really talk about it with. So yep. yeah. And yet she pushes everyone away. That, that yeah. Was, that I know some people like that in she real does, life. But, though, but it's it's just like it's just that. out of fear, man. It's it's not, I don't think it's yeah. I just think that she's scared. She's a scared yeah. girl that doesn't know what's happening. She's frightened. I can totally mm -hmm. understand that. Yeah, I, yeah, I can understand it. My whole thing was just like. It's like you know that Aaron is like your best friend. Like why? Like why yeah. would you? Yeah. No, I, I, I don't I get know. that for sure. But eventually, yeah, but... eventually, she does kind of let him in, right? Like it's at not. The just, end, yeah. 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 At the end, yeah. she gets there. She yeah. gets there. <laughs> but I mean, when you look at her past, it makes sense why she's so closed off, and yeah. it's so hard to like, yeah. you know, get in there with her. So. I mean, Fen is also very sheltered, you know, like we right. said, she didn't even know how children were made. She didn't grow up in a large community and she, she didn't know many people. So I, I do have a lot of sympathy for Fen because she was kind of forced to grow up really fast out of nowhere. And then she's yeah. thrown into this revolution and she's never had real friends before, period. So right. She's kind of going through like think of your like high school years and how awkward yeah. and <laughs> yeah. all right. that like that's what Fen yeah. is going through and yeah. she may not be that young anymore but intellectually she, she is. is yeah so yeah I do have a lot of sympathy for that Fen even me though too. she annoyed me I had a lot of sympathy for her because if I put myself in her shoes I was like oof yeah I don't know yeah. what I would do yeah. I don't know what I would do yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did I did love the uh the tension between Aaron and Cade throughout the whole book. And I think that since we all just finished the ending, it's really uh kind of hard to think back like how much was going on earlier in the book. Uh, but there was a lot of tension between them. Like before things started coming to light, there was a lot of like Aaron was like, I don't know why I can't trust him, but I just don't feel like i can and yeah. even even when he was like Cade was like well show me the ember blade and aaron's like mm, i don't know i don't i don't want to show yeah. you the ember blade and uh and so then he finally goes to Cade one last time and he's like hey so you know why like how did you learn how to fight because like before you didn't know how to fight with a sword and then there was this other guy on the battlefield that said, like, I did what you asked. And, yeah, you know, like that. Can you just, like, explain that? 
And Cade is so deceptive and so good at lying. In that scene, he came back with like some good ass reasons. Oh yeah, I was so mad at him though. Those, but I'm yeah. like, he's Aaron's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. saying all this, but he's right. Yeah, you're just lying to him over and over again. Yeah, yep. it, I was really angry. Yeah, me really too. Angry. But I was, I was like, damn, that is like, like, yeah. How can you refute that? Like and, the the reasons and Aaron Kate comes up with it's... guilty, you mm-hmm. know, for yeah. accusing him in the first place. Like, I wish I could have taken it back. And it's like, no, but like, there's a reason you're suspicious. That's like, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that kind of back and forth tension. Like, even though they're back together and they're happy, they're friends again, all this stuff. There's still just like this trust that they that Aaron just can't quite put his finger on yeah, and kind of this back and forth in Cade's own mind where he's like, well, he's like, I'm firmly in the Croton camp, but now that I'm back with Aaron, I'm starting to feel this other way. And it was like a lot of back and forth for him. And I I just love that kind of uh, indecision. And you really didn't know which way it was going to go. Even up until the very end, I wasn't quite sure uh, how it was going to land, but um yeah, and then I loved the scene of like Aaron finally discovering Cade's deception, and and Cade wakes up in the morning, and Aaron just has the little uh, oh the little, yeah the, the crypto, cipher thing yeah. yeah yeah, and he's like what's this and like he has like this whole thing, and then he just leaves him there in the in the wilderness, which is gnarly, and, dude. Yeah. That scene was yeah. gnarly. I was a little disappointed with like, like that whole journey because. Because it just came to nothing. It came to nothing. Yeah, they like were right off. there and then yeah. they turned around and left. And yeah, that made me pretty mad. I I was like, are you serious? I was really excited for this. I thought that was going to be a huge part of the book was them looking for the shadow casket, going yeah. to this island. And so when it was very short, resulted in nothing I, and Ruck dies. Yeah. Uh, I was oh like, my gosh, dude. Yeah. I cried for that. Me part. too. I cried Me when too. Rock died. Absolutely. That, that hurt Absolutely. my soul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was kind of like, I was like, okay, well, if you've come this far and you've like, like if you don't go on, then all those people are sacrificed for nothing. Nothing. It's like, so why would you not go the extra, like, like they were close, Literally right? Literally twenty feet. <laughs> yeah, they were really close, and then and then like, Pell no, gets no. captured by Clisson, yeah. and she's out of her mind, but yeah. she has the shadow casket. Yeah. Um. So it's like, how did she get it? What did she have to go through to get it? We yeah. got none of that. Yeah, and, and here's the other thing too. I don't know how I felt about there being another MacGuffin in this book. Like the MacGuffin in the first book is the Ember Blade. It's like we, you know, we got to <laughs> yeah. go to. The, we got to go to the dangerous place to get the thing, which is the MacGuffin yeah. to save the kingdom. And in this book, I was like, it was almost like, and like, obviously the story was different. It wasn't like derivative, but it was kind of like, okay, we got to go to the dangerous place to get the thing again. It was like and a copy like, paste. Yeah. You know, I, for I was that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And like the MacGuffin ended up in enemy hands, but I, I don't know. I'm like, I I just don't know how I feel about it being the same thing where it's like, go on this dangerous journey, get the MacGuffin to save the kingdom. I thought it was kind of the same a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So then we see Clisson when he's talking to the doctor or, um, or maybe it was his, uh, it was the commander or whatever. And he was like, I'll go get the shadow casket because he tells him about his vision he's like oh was, yeah yeah i was holding this orb he's like send me if we fail say it was all my idea and again he's staking his entire reputation yep. on this one thing yeah. which is exactly what he did in the first <laughs> book and it almost doesn't work out for him yeah it's like why would you do literally the exact same thing you <laughs> did in the last book that got you so low but it does work out for it him works he, out for him yeah, yeah. So, so he's, he's i was kind uh, of happy it worked out for him a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know, for real I was for some reason rooting for him like a tiny bit so <laughs> oh yeah yeah clisten i was definitely rooting for clisten in this book um what'd you guys think of these interludes because it it took me a while to figure out that it was kender journaling oh, kenda kenda journaling to her dead twin 
it took me forever just to figure out who was writing yeah. the letters, which I found frustrating. Yeah, I I thought it was a guy. Like based on based on the voice that the narrator was using, I thought it was a dude. Oh, uh, from the way I was reading it, I knew it was a girl because at the end it said, "I don't want to talk about Aaron." You see, I haven't mentioned him yet, and I was like, "Okay, it's a girl." Oh. Was that one of the earlier installments? That was the of- first one. Oh, I missed that. Okay. It was like right at the end. It was like, didn't notice how I haven't said anything about Aaron. Yeah, I don't feel like talking about it. Or, And oh. so at first I thought it was uh, Fen. And then I was like, yeah. no, it can't be Fen. And then I figured it out in the letter where Steven says he's going with um, Aaron to uh, bring Eddie Ann's body back. And she's yeah. like upset that she wasn't going. Yeah, and so okay. they said something in the letter, and I was like, "Oh, okay, it's Kenda." I was like, "I got it finally." Okay, see, yeah, but I it, didn't understand the purpose, like why right. we were getting this, and it, and it was so weird too because she would like talk back and forth with somebody that we couldn't hear, and yeah. so like she'd be saying something and be like, "No, no, it wasn't like that," and like you know stuff like that mm-hmm. is like, "Wait, who are you talking to?" And yeah. so it, it took me until literally the final installment to realize that it was Kenda um, and, and to, uh, and she, she mentions like her dead twin that she like consumed yes. in the womb or whatever. Um, and so I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So she's like having this conversation in her head with like her dead twin. And no, I don't, I don't it's really... like a journal. She says well, at yeah. one point, it's like a journal, right? Yeah, she she's writing it down, but it's like this conversation. Oh, yeah, between her and her yeah. dead twin that she never met, though. Yeah, and so I'm like, I'm like, it was just weird. I was like, what I, what was the purpose of, I, I don't know. I felt like we could have done without that. And that was yeah. also like, at first I thought, why do we keep getting these Mara and Kiri scenes? I Which I later understood why. But at the time, that was one of the few scenes where I was like, I don't care about this. I don't care about Mar- Mara and her pupil. Yeah. I felt like we got a little too much of it. I was like, I please move on. I don't, I don't want to read about this anymore. Yeah. I don't the, really like Mara though. So maybe yeah, like that I, played into it. I, I hated Mara so much. Even, even from the first book, I was just like, I could not stand Mara. She like, she hates all men. Yeah. And, all well, men. Like all just boys, like men, statement. children, yeah. any, any yeah. guy that has, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Even, even the Willem guy who she like initially, so she makes this invention and she knows that in a Croton society, she won't be able to get the invention out there. And so she asks Willem to... No, not uh, Willem. Willem was the smiler. It was like uh, something with a D. It was her old lover. Yeah. That yeah. she oh, left I... because she didn't want to have children with him. Yeah, it was oh, some, I yeah, it... some like a- aristocrat that she had. The been one with. who I introduces thought that's who Willem her was. at the no, party. Willem's no, the leader Willem's... of the rebels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Huh, okay. It was the guy well, who, like, at the party, he got her the invite yeah. where the Ember Blade was and then, like, introduced her to the right. key master. And yeah. For some reason, I thought his name was William. No, Willem's the smiler. Okay. But, yeah, he, uh, so it's like, okay, sh- so she creates this invention. She knows that in a Croton society, she can't get it published or produced or whatever. And so she asks him to do it. And then she hold and he does, and he gives her all like pretty much all the money for it. Yeah. And then she holds this grudge over him, saying that he's oppressing her. It's like, I mean, like the the society as a whole is kind of oppressing you, but you decided to give this guy this invention to produce, yeah. yep. like because you couldn't, like, oh, it made me <laughs> endlessly frustrated. Yeah. I was yeah. so I was so mad with her. And then she just takes that grudge and holds it over all men everywhere. Yeah. She was bitter, like so yeah, she very was, bitter. Like, yeah. The definition of bitter and yeah. I I like c- could understand some anger, but I didn't understand her just Yeah. And, you chose this life this is what yeah. you wanted yes it is unfair you couldn't get like a patent and sell it but like you still got all of the reward yeah yeah you still got everything that you wanted in the beginning you got yeah, yeah. you're still fucking furious at yeah so that dude angry. and the people for making it happen oh, yeah i God. found that annoying and then her weird 
mom obsession with Kiri. Oh, that, yeah, was that was weird. Much. Yes. That was so, super weird. I did just it, didn't like Mara. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you what though, I did not see that ending coming from no. Kiri where she was she was actually the traitor and Mara kills her. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is some grim dark shit here where <laughs> Mara, like basically her mom is like she betrayed us i got a poisoner and she like holds her while she dies yeah. i'm like oh my god and then that other guy comes in she's like willem she, that that was willem willem, willem, willem comes willem, in yeah. and talks to her and it's it, like hey yeah and then he realizes she, he's like oh fuck. oh she already did it, did it. Sure. well yeah. oh, okay well because he's telling her he's like you know we need to go after Cade because he's the traitor and he, she, she's like no he wasn't the traitor kiri yeah. was and Willem's like, okay, well, we need to grab Kate. And she's like, I already took care of it. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then he like, looks over oh. and sees like her her body. And he's like, has this moment of just like, oh, fuck. Okay. All right. She took care <laughs> of it. Yeah. She took care of it. Yeah. That was a wild moment. I was like, man, these are like everybody in this group. Everybody in this book has some like morally gray oh, aspect yeah. to them. Oh, yeah. I, I just thought that was so good. Um, I love it when Grub steals the hammock so that Aaron and Kenda would end <laughs> up was in great. one together. That was great. I had to reread the line because I didn't understand it at first. And then I yeah. was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Grub is talking to Kate and he's like, mud slug Grub's friend. Grub helps friends. Yeah. And this is like this astonishing realization to Cade, like, oh like wow grub is actually like part of the group that's crazy and um and so it's like this big revelation for for Cade. and then i i thought the hammock scene with the two of them was kind of cute and uh like he puts his arm around her and he like opens his mouth and she's like you're about to say something awkward don't this is nice <laughs> now go to bed yeah just keep your <laughs> mouth shut please yeah. he's like She's like, right now, like this, this is nice. Let's not comment on it. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> I Thanks. love that. Yeah. Uh, and then Ruck dying. Dude, let's talk about. Okay, so we we kind of mentioned Ruck dying, but we have a high body count in this book. Yeah. We have a lot of people that die. We're we're literally down to like four of the main like original characters. Like everybody else is dead because Orica died. Uh, Herod died, Vika died. Klein um, died, Garrick died. Yep, Klein died, Garrick died. Ruck, Ruck is dead. Uh, Mara kills Kiri. Vink, Vika drinks the blood of Commit her suicide, like, leader. Yeah. I didn't, well, I didn't see that I, I, coming. I didn't see her die. I thought it was going to work. And I maybe knew she that she be... had this like crazy... She, her, her ideals were... were they, they didn't seem twisted at the time, but I had a feeling that they were kind of off. Going yeah, to get there. Like yeah. All the other druids were telling yeah. her, like, no, like this is not how this is it won't work. It won't work. Yeah. She's yeah. like, it will work. Like, I know it'll work. So I had a feeling that it was that it wasn't going to. And I was super bummed out to see that it didn't. Yeah. Um, Cause I was like just praying. I was like, if she can do this, like she'll be the tide turner. Like she'll make yeah. this happen. Yeah. Um, but nope, it killed her in the end. So super sad. And she was kind yeah. of like spiraling. Oh, for sure. There. Yeah. She was, she was like, like kind of losing crazier. her mind a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. she definitely was she was yeah. going full-on tyrant <laughs> yep yeah. exactly and like after uh like as she was dying what killed me is that ruck was there like licking her hand oh yeah was yeah like, oh, well you mean shit. like the spear like ruck was already dead but like yeah he yeah, came like, like a spirit, spirit of yeah. ruck yeah super yeah. sad yeah um yeah so what a i mean that's ballsy to kill especially i did not see herod dying coming like after just, everything he went through i yeah. didn't expect it at that moment and i was surprised by that also i was like oh i thought he was like part of the group now right like, really really so i was surprised by that i was yeah. who, who yeah. what was the name of the girl that she was like the kind of the pirate captain of the ship that they got onto and also somebody that knew herod in magwin. The past. magwin magwin oh, that whole scene yeah. that whole scene when he you know he's he's impaled he and was dying just he and, was just coming back to life. Yeah, and and, yeah. and then, but when Megwin like Megwin sees him and he's he's like, you know, did I get him? And she's like, you, you got did it. it, like you yeah. did, it. <laughs> did it. You can die yeah. in peace. And I was like, oh my god, so I know, yeah. I know. Uh, 
I was like, he finally didn't want to die anymore. And yeah, now right. you're going to kill him off? Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. But I thought it was like really God. noble, like kind of a yeah. noble death. Like he knew what he was going to do. Like he knew when he was running in the mist, like he knew he was aiming for this pit, right? Yeah. Um, And it worked and he got the Dread Knight. And I was just like, man, what a what a yeah. way to go. As sad as it is, that was that yeah. was pretty noble, yeah. pretty, pretty potent way to go. And that's all he wanted because he said even at another part in the book, he was like, I can't when I'm fighting someone just like give up essentially in the middle of it and let them kill me. Like yeah. I, I can't die like that. It has to be like me at least trying. Yep. So... I, yeah, that was a great scene when his sword gets knocked out of his hand and he like closes his eyes and he's about to accept his feel like I could give up. And then at the last minute he like turns his horse around and heads towards the pit. Yeah. Yeah. That was Super fantastic. Cool. I agree. But yeah, that was a super sad scene when um magwin was like yeah. standing next to him and she's like yeah you're you're dying but you got him you know yeah. like yep. that that was great i really like that um i kind of thought they were gonna end up together magwin that's what i thought her, yeah. <laughs> i thought that's what it was all leading to but guess yeah. not <laughs> i got this great quote from the book uh it's with grub and aaron and uh somebody says i think it's fen or somebody says, or maybe it's Kenda, I'll find myself a hot bath and never come out again. <laughs> and then it goes to Grub. And Grub will and Grub will go take dump. Grub always takes dump when going <laughs> to new places to claim the territory. <laughs> and then it says, Aaron stared into the middle distance, at first trying to come to terms with this fact, and then erasing it from his memory. <laughs> and I, I just love this, like... I know. I, I love this idea of Grub saying something so insane and just like everything kind of stopping for a minute. And even Aaron is just like, uh, yeah, like I, I just love that, <laughs> that visual. <laughs> yeah. So we, we talked about Fen selling everyone out to the fell folk. We'll, we'll see how it goes guys. I, I could, I could turn around on it, but right now I'm just like, now all these like savages are going to be running Ossia. Like, is that any better than the Crotons? I don't know. Like you see it as savages. I think me and Gabe like see it very differently. It's more of just like a forest people, people who know yeah, how to and, live off the land. And, and they're, they're people that, that have been so utterly suppressed for hundreds yeah. of years under the rule of the Fang, just brutalized and have all these like yeah. sanctions and, and yeah. downplays by them. And so I, I, personally feel like they will you know she'll it won't be it won't be the same as like an Aussie ruler right it might be different but i don't think yeah. it's gonna be bad for the country no yeah and and you kind of touched on <clears throat> a, a reason why i don't like it too is because like from the beginning of the book it was about Aussie and crota yeah mm -hmm. and like Aussie was supposed to reclaim their well, land well technically they're, so, they're they're still Aussian though right sam do you, yeah they you are they're, but they're are still they? Aussian, but, yeah yeah they are they're, they're just like they say that like, a lot yeah yeah they're like they're the fellow folk but they're still Aussian at That's the end right. of the day they're still Aussian. they're in the territory of Aussie. they always have been yeah um they've been ruled by Aussie been, like, before separate. before the crotons have been here they were under Aussian rule um which okay. was good which was good for them and then the Crotons came over and, and kind of took took that apart. Because they even yeah. talk about at one part how Adian's sister never married because of some old Crotin law of like a bride tax where like the right, ruler yeah. can sleep yeah. with like the first, bride. Your firstborn son has to like come to Crota or whatever that the too. fuck it is. Some crazy yeah, stuff. So yeah, so like they've been like just so oppressed for so long yeah. and um, so that's we're... why I think I was okay with Fen telling them because it's like, yeah. oh my God, they're finally stepping up and they're yeah. secretly getting betrayed in a way as well. Yeah. So I, I don't think I was aware that the fell folk, I thought the fell folk were pretty removed from everything and they weren't really stepped on by Crota. They just had no place in like this hierarchy. Well, they said that they were just in such a remote region that it would have been really hard yeah. for the Crotons to like master a full attack on them. Um, yeah, they said and, it, like it wasn't worth the losses that would have have happened from Crota. Yeah, and, and that's why I was kind of like they they were like kind of out of this whole thing. Like, yes, they were like okay, like they're the most oppressed people. Like they're underneath both the Ossians and Crotons. Well, it, but I'm it, like, really, this was about like the Croton 
like not nobility but the Croden like common people and or not uh, the Ossian common people and the Croden invaders yeah no just I was like these fell folk just I just felt like they came out of nowhere and I was I, like I right. totally get what you're saying like like coming from the sense of like a city like where like you know the Crodens invade like Seattle or something like a right. big ass like city. They were firmly in they that were, first yeah, like Ossian region. For sure. Yep, exactly. And they totally took over and fucked everything up. Um, but yeah, I think that the, you know, imagine I'm trying to think about it. Like, you know, S- Seattle is the area where Croton came in, right? Yeah. And then like Stanwood is where the fell folk live, right? Like right. City <laughs> way the fuck out of nowhere. It's in the same place, ruled yeah. by the same people, but it's just out of the way. Um, right. But you know, they still. This yeah, and I think right. that's why it's, like, so important that, like, because they were finally involving themselves in this, like, revolution when they never had before, that they were also getting secretly betrayed by the people they were supposed to be partnering yeah, with which, is yeah. such a big deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So then why not do, like, a partnership then instead of just handing everything? Like, they are well, handing so, everything so, over no, to the so, Bellflop. So Aaron... He, he didn't have a choice. It, it I know, was, I know. He, okay, because yeah. that's yeah, yeah. that's what it boils down to for me. It was either he loses the chance he gets by by uniting the fell folk, well, w- with the girl, whatever her name was, the yeah. queen now. Of, yeah. Uh, it was like that or nothing. And and the moment where he, like, thinks in his head, he's like, he's like, I need to do whatever it takes to make this happen. And he's like, this is the yeah. only thing that'll work in Hanser to the Ember Blade. Yeah, I mean, like, the image of the blade can only do so much yeah you gotta get it in the right hold it right exactly yeah exactly Mm -hmm. this is this is interesting i don't don't (laughs) think i've ever i don't think i've ever had this much of like a political discussion about like a fantasy a fantasy world this is cool yeah but it's great you know what i mean (laughs) i I, and i think it speaks a lot to the author's writing that we're able to kind of be like I, wow, you saw it this way, but I saw it completely diff- yeah, differently right. and be able to like articulate why we each saw it the way that we did it and how we interpreted it differently. Right. Without I, a like doubt. Yeah. My favorite part and the fact that we all liked it, but we yeah. like liked it for completely different yeah, reasons right. is, yeah. is so interesting too. <laughs> 100%. Um, all right, well, let's go into, uh, this is kind of where we switch over to my my phone notes that are chaotic and unfiltered um and so let's kind of go through this ending a little bit because there was a lot of really really great kind of twists and turns that happened we have uh steven doing this kind of double cross double double cross where at first it looks like he's going to the crotons and kind of like selling everybody out and then he brings them to the Citadel and like stops them at the door. He's like, I need to say something. And his brother is like, fine, what? And he's like, fire. And everybody just dies. Yeah. And dude, that was, I did not see that coming. That was such a cool scene. And he's got his brother in like this chokehold. His brother's like, why don't you kill me? He's like, uh, cause I need your armor. Yeah, and he like yeah. takes his armor. He's like, I need your armor without any blood or holes. And so he takes off his armor and he puts it on. And I was just like, dude, that was such a good, yeah. like double, double cross. I were you, did, were you guys like, cause I, I, I didn't catch on to the double, double for a while. I thought that he truly was going to bring gonna them go in. With his brother. Yeah. Go yeah. with his brother and let him in to try and take back the Fang in, in, in a, like, you know, I, I think his motives were peaceful for the most part. Like he didn't want to kill everybody. Like he just right. wanted to get his birthright back. But yeah. then when he like he said, No, you're gonna fucking die, I was like, dude, that was so Yeah. Cool. That was such yeah. a great, yeah. great moment. His story was just interesting because his story changed. Yeah. Like he had one yeah. goal and then it changed to a different goal. Yep. And he had gone to such extremes to try to achieve his first goal of, you know, reclaiming what is it? The the fang the i think yeah the, the, fang, the fang is the, the fang name is of the... his homeland yeah yeah or is his home and now Castle. i'm just supposed Castle. to believe that he's okay with not getting it and is yeah. on like the good guy side i found that just a, t- a little bit, bit fishy hard to believe. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah yeah i i totally see that yeah for sure so i'd be i'm gonna be interested to see where that goes yeah, yeah i i would almost wonder if like 
if he's like, this is the move for now. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, he was able to get his brother who he's been carrying this grudge against for, for years. Like, yeah. He's, he just got him off the board. Yeah. And so maybe that's one more move yeah. in his plan to yep. take back the Fang. Yeah. And this is just kind of a sidestep that he had to do for now. Yeah. I'd, I'd be interested to see if he did that. Uh, we talk about um, we talked about Herod impaling himself, uh, and then Cade double crosses the the Crotons, yeah. and this was such a great moment because you know you you see Cade walk back to Clisson, and I didn't really understand what Clisson was saying about the letters. There was like letters okay. on the table. Can you explain? There was two ways to interpret it, in my opinion. And they okay. were making it, they didn't, oh. he didn't want it obvious because we didn't know what was in Cade's letter, right? We didn't yeah. know if it was him giving them away or if it was him saying like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Right. So if it said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. And he took the letter away thinking Clisson hadn't seen it. Then Clisson wouldn't know he had tried to like give up on the Croton way. But if it had given away the location and Cade had pulled it, then he was still trying to save his friends. So it depended on what was in the letter. So I assumed I assumed that Cade's letter to Clisson was just giving them the wrong location. I thought it was him giving them the right location because when he went to mail the letter, he was so freaked out about sending it. But I... And I but it doesn't it doesn't tell you what no, that I know. deliberation is. I know so that's what I'm saying. I, I I thought it was him giving them I thought it was him double guessing whether or second guessing whether he should betray the Crotons or not, what not whether he should betray Aaron or not. Oh, because, I read it as betraying Aaron. Yeah, because I think I think it was supposed to be read that way, but I think in the end, because obviously they didn't get the location of the ember blade i assumed that he had put in a different location or just said that it was in the house and not the cave or whatever and he was like ah should i give him the ember blade or should i not i thought that was his deliberation yeah but so i'm talking about though the uh so the the letters that were on the counter one of them was from his girlfriend right Oh, Lassa. Yeah. And then there was another letter that was underneath that. And was that Cade's letter? Clisson said, made it seem like he walked in with a pile of his own mail and like yeah. threw it down. And he had planted oh. that one in it to oh, see okay. if Cade would look through his mail while he was gone. Mm. Got it. Okay. Okay. And see, he I, did. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So... So then we get Cade, uh, you know, he comes back to to Clisson and it looks like he's kind of joining up with the Crotons again. And then we see him out in the wilderness when it's like snowing and, you know, Aaron is trying to set off this Ellerite oil and Cade like beats the crap out of him and he gets him down. He's like, dude, stay down, just stay down. Yeah. And um, and then the other Croton guy shows up, a lieutenant or whatever. He's got like a lantern. And Kate is like, give me your sword. Just give me your sword. And there's something in his eyes that tells Aaron, trust me. And I love this moment because Aaron can't decide if like, he's like, am I really seeing this? Or am I just wanting to believe in my friend? It's because and Cade says the thing about the she war. Yes. Or it could yep. have been a pig. And that was the clue to him. That yeah. Yeah. Others- why would he be so specific? He's trying to tell me something. Right, right. And oh, just Aaron deliberating on it for a minute and then eventually giving up his sword. And the lieutenant, he, uh, Cade says something like, yeah, can you smell that or whatever? And the guy goes over there to smell the cave and Cade just kicks him in there yeah, yeah. dropping with the <laughs> lantern. And then he just like gets right in Aaron's face. He's like... <laughs> Run, run. <laughs> and, oh dude oh such a good scene yeah. i loved i loved that and then not so only that much. there's a little bit of role reversal when aaron gets stuck out on the branch of the tree yes. right yeah oh, yes. Yes. They, they have this moment where aaron's like 
no, you know, I know why he did it. Like, you just let me go. And Kate's like, I'm not going to fucking let you go. Like, you're going to stay yep. right here. Hauls his ass up with crazy strength. It was so I thought yep. they were going to make us live through the same thing. I know. I'm like, I, know. I was I've like, already no. cried enough. Like, we don't need any more of that. <laughs> yeah. So, I was like, this. <laughs> I was like, it would, it would be really lame. Yeah. If, yeah. if Aaron had fallen, I was yeah. like, I was like, now you're like copying the exact same thing you did from the first book. But, it came out a different way. It worked and well, I, yeah. I think that's why I don't really mind yeah. the whole like MacGuffin thing in this book as well, because it didn't end up with the good guys. It ended up with the bad guys. So yeah. like now one side has a powerful artifact and the other side has a powerful artifact. Yeah. And and then same like with the Cade and Aaron thing. Cade was like, screw it. I'm just going to like try to pull him up. And he pulls him up. And ah, uh, dude, that whole yeah. scene. Was and awesome. I like that we got like closure with that issue. Like I, yes. I was like, if we're not going to have them be like mortal enemies now, and that's where the story's going, then can we just get them back to being friends again? And there's no right. secret. Yeah. And right. like, can we just get back to normal with them at least, <laughs> please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So then the the next note that I have here is about Clisson giving the shadow casket to the doctor at Raven house. And we kind of talked about this. It very much seems like uh, he has made a deal with someone to get a new house, a new like rank. He's like an overwatchman again. And um, you know, Clisson. So this is where it gets interesting because, and we talked about this a little bit, but it sounds like Clisson has made a deal with either the doctor or somebody high up in power that either his his wife and her husband has been or his ex-wife has been taken away somewhere remote or they have been killed yeah and i wonder if the doctor had his like either dread knights or sh kind of shadow minions or whatever they are i wonder if he had them take care of them because Clisson's daughter has recurring nightmares about the shadow people. And I'm like, ah, this is either something that Clisson has been stuck with since the seance and has passed on to his girl. Yeah. Or like she mentions that she saw the shadow people take mommy. And so maybe they came by and took the mom and husband. I don't know. Mm. Something to think about. Of that. Yeah. Something yeah. to think about. It's something yeah. to think about. I just don't know if he would have exposed his daughters to that period. So I, I, not on not purpose, of course. Yeah. yeah, not on I, purpose. That's what I'm saying. It would it couldn't have been intentional. So it would have had to have been accidental like, and yeah, yeah like something like he he didn't know the doctor was gonna go that far or something, yeah. you know, like that yeah. kind of thing. Um yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I'm I really so here's a question. Do you guys think Clisson gets a redemption arc? I thought that's where it was going, and I don't think that's how it's going anymore. I, really? I okay. think that's what they wanted us to think. And then once he got his power back, he seems to be completely back up to his old ways. So yeah. I think it was just... So what, just out of curiosity, what makes you think he's back to his old ways? Was there anything specific that said he was kind of like an asshole again or? Well, well so like what... getting the wife out, right? Well, yeah, getting, but that's. Getting rid I... of the ex-wife. Um, and he says something at one point about his daughters, how he would like burn the world down if it meant like saving his daughters or something yeah. along those lines. And I'm like, oh, so now you're not saying like, it's all about Crota and we have to make sacrifices. And now it's about him. Like what's right. going to be best for him and his family. Yep. That's I would totally, totally back that up. I think that, I think that once, you know, I, I think that, that always he's been loyal to, to Crota for the most part, right. Just through his yeah. military service or whatever. But once he, um, you know, like she said, he'll burn the world down for his daughters. But but I think regardless of how he burns the world down, he's going to try and do it on Crota's side. Like, I don't yeah. think he's going to go and just destroy Crota because, you know, they threaten his daughters, which it won't. He's now he's a he's a commander. He's the commander of the whatever they are in this city. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. he's in control. And so yeah. I think uh, I think that no matter what, he's going to be kind of fighting against the rebels, even if it's just like kind of nonchalantly doing it. I don't think he'll yeah. ever like say like, fuck Crota. I'm going to come over to the rebels. We're going to win Asia, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's fair. Maybe if he had kept his humility a little bit longer, he would have been like fuck Crota. Yeah, because once I, he got his daughters, man, it was just yeah. right, it was like seemed like he was right back to like I got what I want. I'm a yeah. leader, like in the military, like I'm ready to like, yeah keep growing and Absolutely. get better at you know yeah. stopping out rebels or whatever. Yeah. All right, well, I'll kind of go through this ending really quick um, and, and chime in if you have any notes on it. Yep. Um, so we see Aaron and Fen walking to Vika's grave. Fen is much farther along in her pregnancy, and Aaron now has a scraggly beard. Mm. Um, <laughs> he, he now sees the fallibility of Vika and every other mentor he's followed, including Garrick. <laughs> and decides to be his own man so i'm interested to see because aaron did kind of irritate me at the beginning of this book a little bit because i he felt really like just kind of sad and like he was just following vika like a puppy um and so it'll be interesting now to kind of see what he does on his own um, and I, I wouldn't even be surprised if there's a period of time where he like breaks away from the rebellion for a while and kind of does something else. It, it, I mean, it depends on if this is like a six book series or yeah. if it's a trilogy. If it's a trilogy, he probably won't do that. Yeah. But if it's a longer series, I would bet that there's a period of time where he's like, I'm kind of done with this for a while. Like I've lost yeah. a lot of friends. Yep. Um, and so I, I could see that happening, but yeah, it is interest, uh, good to see him being his own man now because he was kind of following everybody else. Yeah, Uprisings are starting all over Ossia. So we have all these little groups that are kind of rising up. And I think in the next, the next book, we'll see like a much more unified front or maybe just a bunch of like rebellions. Maybe they yeah. won't be unified. But the, uh, the Croton king decided to broker a deal with the fell folk an exchange of Croton prisoners, including Olden, which, man, he is completely fucked when he gets back to Croton territory. He messed up so bad, there is no way that th he is getting out of a... Yeah. Getting out of that cleanly. Uh, Olden, the the uh, Staven's brother. Oh, Al Alden. Alden, Alden. Right? Yeah, oh, Alden. Yeah. It, it sounded like Olden in the audiobook see these this is why i can't just listen to audio yeah. <laughs> yeah um but yeah so he i mean he has messed up royally there is no way that he's getting away clean um so now the crotons have him and they they traded them for the remaining sards in those uh laboratories that we saw um i don't know about all of them maybe not all the laboratories but definitely in the one that we that we saw um aaron takes a minute to think about tyranny and he uh he says he thinks the world is turning against crota but that's the problem with tyranny at the first sight of weakness everyone you've wronged is ready and willing to rip you apart and everyone weakens in the end. Maybe the best way to keep power is to spread it around. Mm. And so I think this is a little bit of foreshadowing as to you know what we can expect as like a final resolution in the end. Either that or it all goes to hell. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get everybody gets a name. This is cool. I love this. Yeah. Where uh what what's what's her name? Britannia? What's her name? It's like uh, Bricka or... Bricka? Okay. Bricka sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it was spelled like B-R-I-C-C-A in the oh, book. Okay. It was... Yeah. Okay. Well, she she names all of them. We get Aaron the Unchosen, which I thought was kind of a kind of a shitty name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I remember thinking his was weird. Yeah. We get Aaron the Unchosen. We get Fen uh, Iron Arm. Yep. Cade the Returner and Grub of the Crows. Uh, <laughs> we also get Malacca Fohammer. And I was, it was just one of those moments where it feels like, uh, it feels like that scene in the Fellowship of the Rings where it's like, and you have my sword and my hammer and, and you have my bow. And like, <laughs> I, I was just like, let's yeah. go, dude. I'm like, awesome. this, I'm like, this is our team. 
Like our our team is all together. They're united. We're good to go. And and you know, in like the name of the wind, when he goes and picks his sword, when he's training with the uh, Ademi or however, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, with yeah, Tempe and yep. them, and he goes and yep. like picks the final sword, and like, of course, it's like a sword with like a really important history, and yeah, so it felt like that kind of like big moment, like okay, yeah. Yeah. now right. you're someone, you're you're really becoming a legend in the right. moment, right. And then I I forget exactly what it was, but we got kind of a scene near the end there where we see like Aaron and Cade kind of like embracing and just like a firm, you know, kind of resolution to they are friends again. They trust each other again. They're they're on the same side. Uh, So that was good to see. And then, man, I I loved these closing sentences, guys. These were so good. And if you uh, if you have any like part of it that you want to read from the book, you're more than welcome, Sam. But my favorite part was, uh, you know, Fen and Aaron are kind of standing there and they're like in an embrace. And she says, it's all changing, isn't it, Aaron? And I still cannot see where it will end. What kind of world is waiting for my child? Mm. And then Aaron says, the one we make for them together. <laughs> and, and I was just yeah. like, I was uh. like, that's, ah! it's like such a good way to like close it out. Like it was just like, it was so cinematic. Like I could yeah. see it in a movie and just like the credits rolling right after that. Yeah. It's just like, let's go. I'm ready for the next book. I'm so, I'm so excited to, yes. to keep going. <laughs> Um, it just stinks like the second book just came out so it's like I how know. long yeah. will it be <laughs> yeah, until we get another sure. installment i know <laughs> and, and it took i i think it took like um i think it was like four or five years Ooh, for this second that. book don't to come that. out yeah so we we might have a bit of a wait yeah probably have a while i mean it's they're 800 page books yeah they're, they're, dude, yeah unless you're sanderson you know I was that's just about like a to lot say sanderson yeah <laughs> Sanderson puts out like an 800 book twice a year. <laughs> you know, in the middle of COVID, wrote five secret novels. You yeah, know, for real, dude. On for top real. of his normal workload, but like, okay, <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I only have a couple interesting world building stuff. I I think that I I just really like the nuance that was put into the second book, um, and kind of seeing. You know, Crota, they are still the bad guys. But like I said at the top of the show, like you can kind of see the nuance in their beliefs and they just want everybody to be united. They're going about it completely the wrong way. But they do have like kind of this um, borderline altruistic goal, I think. Um, And kind of seeing that through Kay's eyes, we see like a family who is like a very kind Crodan family. Um, And so... I think that it just brought like a lot more, I guess, perspective to everything. Whereas before we were seeing everything from the Ossian side. Um, and now having Clisson as like a major POV, uh, kind of rooting for him a little bit as yeah. well. Uh, I think, I think this book did that really, really well. Um, and then also just bringing in all the new Dread Knights. I hope, I hope we get new Dread Knights, but I hope that like, they're not just like the kind of mini boss that they were in this game or in this book um, where it's like, Oh yeah. Like they're, they're dangerous, but we know they can be defeated. Like I would love to see like an evolution of the dread Knight That is like, we are completely fucked if we run into one, you know? Yeah. So. Cause that, yeah. In the second book, I feel like they made the dread Knight seem a lot easier to kill than yeah. they did in the first book. Right right so yeah any any final thoughts guys or anything that you would like to see in the next book any theories i mean we we talked about some theories already but any i think uh, i'd like to you know see it get a lot more magical in the yes. next book yeah, i want to know sure. a lot more about we'll see. how you make a dread night um what that doctor's doing what the seance people are doing i want to know more about that see more of right. the shadow realm yeah yeah yep yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I, I thought it was interesting how Vika near the end there, she actually does kind of set off some kind of spell. She like gets really mad after Ruck dies and she 
puts down her staff and it like blasts mm-hmm. everybody. And I was kind of like, oh, what was that? Because we haven't really seen anything like that so yeah. far yet. So uh, that was that was really interesting. So hopefully uh, they'll do more of that. But yeah, I would hope to. Um, I would hope for there to be another two to three year time jump. I think that this was a good, yes. a good enough time jump where it wasn't so long. Where it's like, what have they been doing this whole time? But it, it was like short enough to be like okay, I, they're still like on the journey. They've been doing some other stuff. And, um, I think yeah. I think that was the perfect amount of, of time jump. Same. So hopefully it doesn't go too far ahead. A- after this book, I'm like, I honestly have no idea what is up Wooding's sleeve. Like, yeah, I, like, no I, idea. like I don't know where he's going because everything that I thought this book would be, it was nothing like it at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, there were there was so much more than I was expecting uh, in, in this book. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out and talking about the Darkwater Legacy. Uh, I'm glad both of you guys enjoyed this. I'm glad you're both looking forward to the next one. Definitely. And um, yeah, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll really enjoy the Robin Hobb books. And uh, yeah, on. so you have to be so, here, dude. and then yeah. we can come on and talk about it. <laughs> and I'll force myself to do a reread, even though I know what I'll be putting myself through, yeah, uh, right. but in the best way, but in the best way. <laughs> okay. And you, you like Red Rising, right? I did. I, I stopped at about book four though, because it just okay. got a little too repetitive for me. It oh. was like, how many battles can you go through? <laughs> okay. One of those kind of things. And it got very spacey in the later books. And oh, okay. I love fantasy. I'm not huge. I'm like the solely sci-fi. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I can't do a lot of outer space stuff. I literally can't picture it. Yeah. I'm just not like with you with um what you said earlier. Like it's just something I don't respond well to. Yeah. yeah. So I liked the beginning, but when it got all about space and the battles, I was like, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. That that's what I that's what I liked about the first three books was because there wasn't really like there was space travel, but it, most yeah. of the stuff was happening like, on planet on, on a planet. Yeah. And I, I think that's why Gabe at first DNF'd the second book because he was like, I don't like all this space fighting and stuff. But I was yeah. like, that's that's literally just the first like, chapter. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm so the deal with Gabe and I is uh i'm reading cradle and if, he's if he's, he reads cradle if yeah, he, if he and, reads it <laughs> he reads the four books or yeah. hopefully five in a row that's a lot though I'm you're telling asking four well, or five books i know and... i know it seems like a lot but when you think about it at 1.7 those books are only five hours a piece okay they're yeah. the short ones short yeah. ones okay, super that's short yeah, yeah so because i've been so... listening to it and i'm like he just has to get to book five and if he doesn't like it then I'm he sorry, but that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I'll probably, know, I know, but I'll probably get to book about four. It, so like, it's it, okay, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but so yeah, the deal is, is that if I, if I read Cradle, then he reads, uh, he goes back to Red Rising starting yeah. from the beginning of the first three. Yeah. And so if he does that and he enjoys it, we should, we should do a, an episode for that as well. All right. Yeah. Let me know. All right, well, that is going to wrap us up there, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. And don't forget to subscribe and stick around for future episodes, including some really fun Creators Corner episodes where we talk to other content creators about pretty much anything. We have Madison Goodyear and Bookborn on the schedule for those, so you won't want to miss that. You can reach out to us on Twitter and Discord, which are both linked below in the description, along with our second channel, Fantasy Files Reacts. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, if you could poop anywhere in the world, claiming it as your territory, (laughs) where would it be? (laughs) Let us know in the comments. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Oh. <laughs>